me. Oh, oh, whoop, stop. Sorry about that. Uh oh. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure Sarah appreciates it too. Mark, wait, did oh, you it's, get... oh, continue, please. <clears throat> I was asking Mark Clayton if he got his FT8 up and running. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, he's got a good story for us. Uh, it's working. Uh, we was running it today. Had 162 contacts. Oh, wow. Uh, hmm. Receiving contacts, by the way. Um, I had uh, four from the Virgin Islands, three from Cuba, Half a dozen or so from Canada and the rest east, east and west coast. Interesting. You say receiving only. Receiving only. What'd you do to fix it, Mark? That's the big story. Well, a lot of it, I think, uh, come down to it was noise, uh, and uh, I made some adjustments uh, uh, for the noise. I did figure out, uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Ken, uh, AG5PQ, that uh, might, a lot of it might have been just uh, house electrical noise. So I went out and picked up a couple of those uh, noise reducing adapters, I guess you call them, and plugged them in and then plugged my equipment back into it. Noise level went down about uh, 10, 15%. So that was a big difference too, which helped get a lot more context than they had the day before. Uh, I still think part of it's the antenna out back. Power lines out there don't help. I think if I change the antenna, it'll increase it quite a bit. Because I was informed that most of the contacts on that FT8 are down in the noise level anyway. And if yeah. you get a lot, got a lot of noise, you don't hear it. So I think that was my biggest problem. Cool. So nothing, nothing in your your setup. We had it all right. It's just a matter of getting a little noise out of, yeah. out of the system. Good. Right. Yeah. What do you use for noise filters? I, I they're little uh, devices. You can go buy them. Radio Shack used to carry them, but they're not around anymore. Uh, I went to uh, uh, Best Buy, and they've got these little devices that you plug in the wall, and then you plug your item into it, and it cuts down on the noise that the electrical system in your house generates. Hmm. Might have to might have to look into what. Uh, no doubt, it's probably got a little ferrite bead in it or something, probably. which is what you want to do anyway. And, and it it helped considerably. Uh, you don't get that little bit more whine in the low noise. And well, I actually could hear the signal a whole lot better today. We still need to try the loop. Oh, yeah. yeah. I still think part of it's the antenna out back. I was in uh, I was in Norman today. I got my COVID shot. So making progress there. They did something cool. They actually scheduled the second one right then and there. Yep. They pretty much they have to so they can allocate uh, the vaccine. I've got friends that have had their first one that did not get scheduled, and I have to go back to the website, to that wonderful website, and uh -huh. uh, yeah, and well, go maybe fight, they're just fight different. their way through it again. Did they maybe give they're... you a and time or just a date? A date and time, everything. Just, just same, wow. same time, uh, three weeks from today. Same time, same place. So that was pretty cool. Did you go to the mall, Ken? That was at Sooner Fashion Mall, yeah. Well, I'm working the Canadian County uh, pod on Friday. We'll see, I'll see what they do. Anyway, they, they, they ran a pretty smooth operation, all things considered, although the parking lot was kind of fun. But... So are you going out to El Reno, Sam? Yep. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an MRC volunteer. Oh, okay. Work over there. They won't let me give shots, but uh, you know. <laughs> I think if you were going to start giving shots, this is the one to do because you can barely feel it. 
That was very, very uh for now. Well, I know the get I know you get hit later. That's <laughs> but uh I've being around medical people most of my life and having relatives that are medical personnel, uh, they'll tell you that the secret to getting the shot is having the right person giving it to you. <laughs> uh, I know that when it comes to a blood, to a blood draw, the phlebotomist is uh, everything. Yep. And anybody on the north side, the folks over at St. Anthony's Northplex are very, very good. Well, having done lots of both, it's uh, yeah. the, the 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 best thing for your patient is to not worry about your patient. Yeah, it's when it's when you're trying not to hurt them that you go really slow or whatever, and that's when you hurt them. But if you just go, <laughs> <laughs> it works a lot better <laughs> for everybody. Well, I had a I had a Eastern European lady in uh, Kansas City that uh, drew my blood and. Uh, I barely noticed it. I mean, she yeah. just jabbed me and did it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 she, and she was lovely. I wish I could have seen her again, but we never <laughs> met up again. Well, uh, I, I get allergy injections uh, about every week to two weeks, and uh, I definitely notice the difference between the nurses. Yeah. You know, it's funny. When, when I was going through paramedic training, we uh, – we, practice on each other we start ivs we gave each other shots i mean it was a daily event and uh now you know i was working at francis tuttle you know a few years ago and they have this uh, uh, uh program there and they put all these fake arms and you know <laughs> they don't ever touch each other you know they're but man we used to look like pin cushions you know we had, uh, 30 something years ago i made a mistake of going to uh, the teaching hospital and they bent two of those big thick iv needles Digging around for a vein. Everybody always, I donated blood all the time. They're always, oh, you got great veins. It's perfect. This poor lady must have been her first time because she literally bent two of those big IV. <laughs> I'm like, at that point, you're done. Call somebody else. That's the next one. I just put it right in with no problem. He bent them? Yeah. Good like, Lord. You, you hit a bone. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to go back. You don't want to go in for something like that after the day after you've uh, been to the dentist and had uh, Novocaine, a good load of Novocaine, because they <laughs> extend that with something that makes your veins incredibly difficult to catch. Oh, so it's a good idea to have a couple of days after the dentist before you for, get for, an IV. What, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, okay. For whatever reason. Uh, my left arm is uh, the awesome IV arm, <laughs> IV blood draw, whatever arm. The right arm, forget it. I had somebody put one of those, uh, uh, one of one of those in your mid forearm on my right arm. I about came straight off the damn bed. Hmm. <laughs> they go to draw blood on me for last. Right as they're getting ready to do it, I say, I want you to know I'm a screamer. <laughs> you know? and then oh, I almost out. killed this poor girl <laughs> uh, hey so guys I don't know if you can see my background it has nothing to do with ham radio well really nothing to do with ham radio UFOs flying over you there Sam. yeah you do those are uh, those UFDs are pelicans. pelicans pelicans we've yeah. got about a hundred of them on the lake that I live on out here and that's uh, some a shot I shot this morning of them coming in those birds uh I, I they won't hold still for me to measure but according to the internet they have up to a nine foot wingspan yep give me an idea how uh, how big those suckers are i don't think we're gonna have a fish left in the lake you know well, just hold a fish in both hands like this <laughs> yeah, yeah now sam what kind of pelicans are those those are north they're american white pelicans this is, or Did north you get to see them come in as a group you know, they, uh, they typically kind of dwindle in, you know, they, they, they come in in groups and land in, the uh, in the bay out here, uh, by my house, behind my house. And, uh, until there's about a hundred of them out there and then they, they kind of organize and they, they form a line and they work their way back into the bay. And what I've, what I've been told is they're actually like hurting the fish, uh, oh. 
they herd them back into the into the shallower water uh, back in the bay, and then they feast. <laughs> and, uh, Are you on Northwood Lake, Sam? Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, I've looked at my they, a couple of times. Just haven't pulled the trigger. <clears throat> I've been out here twenty years now. It's uh, I gotta tell you, we we saw this property and we were debating on whether to spend the money and i was out here one day just kind of sitting on the land sitting on the property just kind of debating and these geese came in and made a made a touchdown on the lake i said that's it <laughs> I'm, I'm so i'm hooked decision made yeah <clears throat> they don't they don't much like the uh I, we, we don't uh have the uh <laughs> we don't have these uh uh gosh they're not swans uh Gooses? Well, the geese, cause we have some geese almost yeah. year round. I've got like three that I feed corn out here and they, they stick around almost year round. But <laughs> oh, I would. Yeah. The, Aaron, you could have feed me. These I'd pelicans, stick your I'm sorry. Just lost my, these pelicans only come in a couple times a year as they're coming through and uh, are until the food's gone, I guess. That's why I, I mean, <laughs> they are uh, pretty splendid to, to see. Sam, what's that location again? I'm on Northwood Lake up here south of Piedmont. Oh, okay. I'll I'll, I'll look it up. But it's uh, it's right off Northwest Expressway and yeah. Piedmont. You know, I I was told before I bought the place out here that uh, we're being recorded, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> has has to do with what the the lake was used for, you know, many years ago before all the houses were out here. Oh, yeah, never mind. Teenagers. Oh. Which side of the lake are you on, Sam? Well, I I hate to say there's there's kind of a feud here between the north siders and the south siders, and I don't like to get involved in that. But I'm on the <laughs> south, I'm on the south side of the uh, subdivision, but uh, I don't understand this uh, kind of this competition between the north side south and the south sider, side. huh? Yeah, oh. that's what I keep hearing. You know, White the, Sox the north fan, siders. Are, I get it. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of that kind of rivalry for some reason, and I don't I don't understand it, but. Uh, yeah, We're finally getting our else. finally getting our limbs picked up. I thought the thought the city had forgotten us, but gotta... how the roads looking out there? <laughs> They're actually pretty good, you know. Uh, that, that's uh, the people are always bitching about the roads out here, and and uh, I'll tell you when when I bought this property. Well, let me put go back before that. Ten years before I bought the property here, I. I thought I might want to be out here and I came out here and you had to have a four wheel drive to get down the most of the roads out here. They were bad. Actually, I had a four wheel drive and there were a few I was afraid to go down, but you know, slowly but surely with the homeowners association, they've really done a great job. And you know, there's a pothole here and there, but, uh, yeah, people bitch about, but I'm like, Hey, if you want to live in Gallardia, go, go pay for Gallardia, you know? Yeah. And to my, my first wife went out there with me. I picked out a house out of, it was a foreclosure. I could have got it for a song that backed up right to the lake. <clears throat> but she didn't like the roads. And of course, now I don't have that wife. That I could have still had. <laughs> yeah. Well, she had the property. <laughs> I was going to say, she'd have the house anyway. It wouldn't be yours. So. <laughs> oh, true. But, uh, no, it's it's gotten a lot better. And, you know, it's, uh, they, you know, we, we passed a little road assessment and got a little, uh, little extra money just that's dedicated just to roads and, I wouldn't be the road chairman for for all of TN China. There for a while, they were just buying like uh, like a dump truck full of that uh, chip and seal stuff. Oh, right. And, and I would take my tractor. My neighbor and I would take the tractor and some rakes and some shovels, and we'd just go get a scoop and drive around just, you know, for free, just fixing potholes. And uh, but anyway, now it's gotten to where, you know, they've got enough money. They pay people to do that. And then they redo sections here and there. But you know, when when you've lived here when it was much much worse, yeah, anything's better, you know. So I don't oh, yeah. I don't complain. I'll tell you what, if the trash trucks and the school buses would play better, it would be a lot easier on the roads. I mean, they <laughs> they pull up in front of my house, that trash truck stops on a dime, and you can just see the pavement under those tires. Just you know, wow, you know, 
The same here. You know, he stops and grabs that that thing and dumps it, and then, and the school bus is just about as bad. You know, they come to a screaming stop and kick the kids out, and then pedal to the, the H- middle. The HOA out there giving you trouble over antennas? No, there's nothing in the. I mean, I I'm try to be respectful, but there's nothing in the covenants about antennas. So I could pretty much do anything I want to do. But so you know, uh, did you put tower behind you? No, no. I, I run a uh, uh, infant half wave that just kind of goes down my property, and you can't. And if you're not looking for it, you're not even going to see it from the from the road. It goes out behind, down toward the lake. So I don't know. They uh, what is it? Little platforms they had floating over on the west side. Platforms. Yeah, it's like mean platforms out there with slides and bouncy stuff and all kinds of toys out on the water. And last time I was out there, most of those were gone. Oh, I don't remember. I've never never noticed any of those. A couple people had docks. They kind of come and go. And uh, yeah, there's actually a guy over here, uh, just you know, a couple blocks from me. It's got a big antenna array. Uh, I went over there and knocked on his door one day and introduced myself. Uh, can't think of his name, but anyway, he's he's got a huge tower with three or four antennas. And, but uh, figure if they don't say anything to him, they're not going to say anything to me, no matter what I do. Yeah, this guy's worse than I am. Leave me alone. My wife's really good, but uh, she's she's more of a deterrent than the HOA. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we we bought this place uh, so we could look out at the lake, and we built the house to look out at the lake. And she just doesn't want to look out the back and see all these antennas. So I try to keep them. You got a front yard. <laughs> yeah. Side. Yeah. Just try to keep them hit a little bit. So. so, Mark, you're into Vera here. You're I've got Vera up. I'm. I've got one on order. I got your uh, Vera. Got one up. of those. Up and right. Yeah, one of these uh, is low secure, the new hub. Okay. They're supposed to be out next month. <clears throat> the the Z Wave stuff, you got me hooked. <laughs> you got me hooked. I bought, uh, I, I hooked up my thermostat, this thermostat to my mother's house yesterday, and I ordered a second one today. <laughs> so you can freeze her out or uh, yes. <laughs> yes. roast her if you want. Well, she, her old thermostat was not keeping up with. Um, it was freezing over there is what she said it was 71 so i well, whoops so <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's mike yeah. yeah keep laughing right yeah and uh so i put this on last night and uh it it was able to keep everything up and running and but the neat thing is it'll actually show you you know when it kicks on when it kicks off yeah, uh, yeah. It sends me an email when it kicks on and off and you know i've never gotten into it but you can you know like put uh uh god trying to think you can put sensors on your electric wires coming in yep. and through Vera you can monitor your electric usage in your house and I mean there's there's so much stuff you can do yep. and, uh, just try to figure First out where you're laugh too hard at 71 degrees being not warm enough <laughs> so there's some mornings that 71 is not warm enough for me <laughs> <laughs> as you get older <clears throat> yep Usually sixty seven is fine, but uh... <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's I've been really impressed. This is the one that this is yours, the one that you have. But uh, here's the the alerts and when it it went idle and when it's heating. So the heater wow. the heater started up at six nineteen and it shut down at six thirty four. Cool and. Uh, that's a sixty-six dollar thermostat, so it wasn't you know. I needed right. a new thermostat anyway, so I so I thought, shoot, I'll go give that a shot, and uh, I've been real happy with that little thing. There's this. They really uh, really made a lot better too with the uh, the scenes and yeah, you know you can uh, one one thing that that X10 did that at first Z Wave didn't do, or at least through Vera, was I like to kind of randomize things and uh when i when i first with with z or with x10 i could i could tell it uh, i want this light to turn on uh plus or minus 10 minutes of sun sunrise and it would 
randomize it every day. I mean, within whatever range I, I told it, and I, you know, I thought, you know, especially for security purposes, that looked pretty nice. You know, I mean, very few of us actually put our feet on the floor and turn on the light at the exact same time every morning. And uh, now, now Vera will do that. It'll allow, allow you to. Oh, oh, they will. I've been looking for that. Pretty sure. Um, may not on yours. That's the. Oh, that's okay. The, that's, there were several reasons that I upgraded. You know, one is I, I wanted more devices, but uh, they also. Uh, yeah, that, I. Uh, the The neat thing is I got that that bigger the their Vera Secure one up. I think it's two hundred dollars. Um, but since I have a Vera account with a Vera device on it, they'll give me a fifty dollar credit off of that. Wow. <laughs> you're welcome so, so i was gonna say so thank you very much yeah <laughs> um but this thing it's supposed to it's supposed to pair with uh it says twenty seven thousand different devices it'll actually do wi-fi pairing also um <clears throat> z-wave zigbee and uh rf wow uh both european and um u.s uh, 433 and 335 man i'm gonna also. have to i'm gonna have to upgrade here <laughs> What, uh, one you thing cost that, me, you cost me money. I'm going to do the same. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> one thing, and, and maybe they fixed that too. But one thing, when I bought my new one, it was there was no way just to transfer everything, and that was there is still not a way to do that. They and they were crying and whining. I had to uh, basically re reinstall each device. So, yep. so, so does Alexa know everything that goes on in your house when you do that? Uh, you can. It can. Yeah, I've, got, I've got mine Alexa enabled and, you know, I mean, if you got an Alexa, it doesn't matter whether you got this Alexa, hears everything. And, well, you know, only if you let the power on the device. Well, maybe, well, yeah. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe if the battery's still alive, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although my phone, I know my phone is listening even when I'm not using it. I know sure. it is because stuff comes up on my Facebook feed um, and on my, uh, YouTube channels suggestions that have nothing to do with what I've ever watched because I said something about it. Yep. Like, how about a nice game of thermonuclear war? And then it tells me <laughs> how the bombs are built. Yeah. You know? I mean, that happened. That's the truth. It really did. But yeah, I, I had a friend that was, uh, she and her, her son were in Dallas or somewhere in this motel, and there was this tire store across the street with this really bright sign. And they they were talking considerably apparently about uh, you know how you know bright that sign was and wouldn't they be able to sleep and da 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 and, and then she started getting ads on her phone and on her computer about for tires you know it's just like tell me they're not listening but uh, I don't know I'm wondering about that because I've been watching some stuff on live streaming with the lady friend at her house and then say I get back to my office and I'm getting stuff I'm like how did it know. I was watching that, and it's not like latest current stuff that they would be talking about. It was old stuff that we'd looked up and was binge watching. Yeah, about it. Yeah. Scary. Well, you know, I've I've got a buddy that's in IT, and he worked for with me at Francis Tuttle and since went to Dallas. But anyway, he, uh, you know, he wouldn't let his daughters take their cell phones into their bedrooms and. Uh, you know, he had a, like a 14 year old and 11 year old and cause you know, he's, he was a, a network security guy and he swears, you know, they can turn your camera on and, you know, I've got little shutters on all my computers. See, I can, <laughs> I can, Shut I can just see the Pelicans, but, uh, well, I've, I've got the bug again, so it's time to go chase those things down and, <clears throat> looks like fun looks like fun roger snuck in there i didn't see you until just now hey how's it going you've been good and well you you uh you've been gone for a while you ready to take all the tests and the morse code and and get after it you've been yeah <laughs> now uh i, I had some yeah. personal stuff come up so i've been uh, oh no sorry can you hear me yep yep go ahead sorry yeah, sorry, I had some uh, personal stuff come up, so I've been kind of out of it for a while. But uh, yeah, I've been uh, getting back into the hobby a little more. Um, I was actually uh, 
a couple days ago, I was on Ham Radio 2.0, the YouTube channel. I was on their YouTubers live stream. So that was pretty cool. I got to meet like Rhea from the uh, ARL. And, oh, she's uh, nice. Yeah, she's a nice gal. Yeah, a few, a few others like that. It was a pretty cool experience. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to get back into things and start getting some content out on the channel. So Maybe oh, the good. radiation from that huge radio behind you there uh, <laughs> you know, made you sick or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, with my eyesight, that's the radio that I need. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, hey, Ken, uh, you hear me, Ken? Just wave. Okay. You know, that, that YouTube guy that you uh, told me about with the Morse code, I, I downloaded, I uh, found him last night. Uh -huh. uh, can't remember what it was. Anyway, I started to watch the first video, and that, that is, yeah, that is way beyond me. <laughs> way okay. beyond me. Well, yeah. Oh my gosh. But when you get a little further along, that'll really help you. That will. I mean, really. I mean, once you get once you get your alphabet down, and you want to start building speed, find the slow ones, work those the fifteen word ones, <laughs> or go to go to the to the. Uh, the club website and run those run those that that course yeah it's all done at 20 and you'll you'll acclimatize yourself to the 20 really fast and only in small bites mm. so two letters at a time you know and you can go through it really quick and it, it'll it'll build your ability to follow the likes of uh that website uh, that uh youtube channel and, and yeah, you'll, be, I'm, I'm, you'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised if you do it I'm just at this really fragile stage there, you know, like I, I did the one, he, he was doing words at 15 and about three words in, I was done. I mean, I, I was so far behind. I thought that just don't, discourages you to, me. The you thing know, is you so. don't have to, you don't have to get it all. Just right. let it work. Let it flow. Don't <laughs> stress on it and it'll come to you faster than you think. Yeah, it will. <laughs> well, I've got about half the alphabet. At five words, you know, that I. Yeah, the I problem is if you, if you learn it slow, you got to learn it again when you go faster. That's what I keep hearing, but uh, I don't know. Bite the bullet, man. Because it won't be, it won't be, dit, dit, da, dit. It'll be, dit, da, dit. And it'll, it'll have a, it'll have a sound. It'll be a sound. Yep. Rather than a collection of the, of the dits and da's and. And you if won't you hear think the word, about you won't think about the bits and the da's. You'll just hear the letter. If you hear the word Ken, you don't think K E N. You hear the word Ken, and that's I'm not, that's I'm not fully there. I'm I'm starting to catch words, small words, simple words. Well, I mean letters. I mean a letter, even a letter would be that way. You don't hear the dits right. and da's. Um, oh, now, but it, when you hear words, that's that's they, when you start getting. Yeah, they come along, and it does oh, keep oh. getting better if you just poke at it on a regular basis so i'm hoping on winter field day that i can well, that's get a good idea. organized enough to actually do that's some a, cw contacts on that that's a good because idea. it's a limited exchange yep and you're not going to get caught up in a long QSO that's going to blow your mind you only have to focus on a short small amount so that's my goal for the weekend is to actually make some and others as well, but to make some CW contacts, you that's a really good so, idea. Well, I'm, I'm doing what I should have done what 10 weeks ago when we started doing that class. Is I'm actually trying to spend a little time every day, yeah, and that's uh, the key. That's the key. But uh, no I had pun, there were, no there were intended, weeks, but... weeks that went by with me not doing anything, you know. You know life, yeah. life gets in the way fast, yeah. yeah. But okay. you, you really, I know you own 10 minutes of your day that you could do it on. Oh really, yeah, it's all a yeah, matter of choices. But, but it's just a matter of getting in the habit. If you get in the habit, I do it. I do mine mostly before I crash. Just sometimes during the day too. But I always had mine on. Had mine on in the background. Like when I recorded all this stuff for the for the web, I just had it in the background on my desk. And I mean, I could be on the phone. I could be typing something. It was just really low. And just those sounds coming in there, reinforced. I, you know, I learned code a long time ago, but man, just listening in the background picked my code speed up really quickly. Um, 
and not not working on it. Like Ken said, don't stress on it. Just have it playing in the background. Just like kind of hearing the word Fred, 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 Fred. Yeah, if you, you're a call sign, you, you you everybody starts out doing CQ, CQ, you know, the, 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 uh, my call sign and the letters in your call sign. Just just listen to see if you can pick those out when the stuff's blowing by you. And pretty soon you pick up another one or two and another one or two and you'll be there. It's just, I mean, I'm, I, it's still challenging for me, but I'm, I'm far, much farther along than I was just two months ago. Who is the uh, YouTube thing you were talking about? Pardon? The Who website? The yeah. yeah. Uh, it's uh, uh, Ham Radio QRP. And he does, he does. Uh, that's, that's his YouTube uh, user. YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Okay. YouTube. Yeah, it's, it's not a YouTube, website. It's YouTube, his YouTube, not a YouTube channel. Uh, his YouTube username or whatever you want to call it. Radio QRP. Yep. And uh, he does some 100 words at 15 words a minute, 20 words a minute, 18 words a minute, 22. Anyway, and he just has a sequence of, of the most 100 most used English words, for example, or 100 QSO words. And Well, that's a good idea. And he just plays them and you watch it. And then pretty soon you're not watching it and you're hearing it. And it, it's a good, it's a great uh, YouTube channel for that. How come I and can't it, find it? It's not something that you have to sit and do the whole thing because you can just stop, come back, pick up where you were, restart, play it over. It still helps. It's, it's not a bad thing at all. And yeah, Mark, I had a little trouble coming up with it too, but it suddenly it was just there. Let's see. If I can... That would be a good, I mean, that's, I like his ideas that like to do once you get QSOs, if you start getting, you know, um, there's a, just a limited number of words. I know that we were talking the other day about uh, some uh, contests, you know, get on the air. The big thing is you have to, as soon as you can recognize your call, everything else you can program. Oh, it's Bill uh, Robertson and I were talking. As soon as you can recognize your call, you can program everything else in a keyer and shoot that stuff out. Um, so like for field day, all you have to have is recognize the other guy's call and you can listen to that three or four QSOs in a row and then start uh, jamming it out to get to him. So that I hadn't thought about contest being an easy way to do that, but. That, that's my battle plan. Just listen until I got all his information. Yeah. And then, yeah. Mark, try, like one of his videos here is Morse code practice oscillator. So try looking for that in YouTube. Just, just go can. CW 100 words. There he is. There he is. Bam. That's it. Ham Radio QRP. I don't know why. It should have. We're going to hit subscribe and by golly, fix that. That's going yep. to have to be another uh, an article because that's a really good idea to um, to do that kind of stuff. That <laughs> He's got one down here, 30 words per minute, I think. Yeah, but the trip is not to try to, not to try to grab everyone right up front. Don't do that. Just let them go by. And, and listen, just feel for the sound of the whole thing when it gets it out. And eventually you'll start picking words out. And before you know it, you're going to be one of the pros. <laughs> well, okay, maybe not quite before you know it, but you know, yeah. it, 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 you'll make progress. So you definitely will. Oh, so he even puts the, he puts the text on the screen. What a good idea. Yeah, you can see it. You know, Ken, I, I remember a, a friend in Fort Smith at uh, Amateur Radio Club there. He'd been doing it for, I don't know, 40, 45 years. It's one of our Elmers there in the club. And uh, he was real big on CW. That was his favorite thing. I mean, he could talk in CW. Um, <laughs> but uh, he, he could actually do it 40, 45 words a minute without even batting an eye. But he he's said hearing the, words. But the problem, well, I mean, as far as doing it, watching him on the key, on the, uh, doing the paddle, just working it. Uh, and he said the problem he had with that was, there wasn't that many people out there could hear, figure out what he said at that rate. 
uh, he'd pick one or two up that would actually hear it, but he said it was very small. Well, he said he'd have to go ahead. Yeah, all right. Let's say about 15 to 20 word a minute QSOs are pretty common. Yeah. yeah. But he, he said during contests he could get some of them that were up 30 words a minute mm -hmm. and maybe even as high as 35. But he said after that, there wasn't anybody there. Well, there's certainly certainly some truth in that. There's only a handful of folks with that kind of skill. But but at the 20 word range in an under slightly under 15 to 20 range is probably quite a few. And, and if you just sit and listen, there's quite a few of them in there yeah. running in that range. But there's the sum of 10 and 12. So you don't have to have magic fingers to uh, to get out and play at it. Yeah, you can go. It, the you've got the really slow guys. The novices are in the five word a minute stuff. But the the thirteen words a minute, you'll get a lot of good uh, yeah. stuff. There's a lot of good opportunities. I know Ken uh, Goodson always talks about that. That you know, thirteen, you're you're going to hear a lot of stuff out there that you can copy. Uh, but if you're running twenty, thirteen sounds slow, which is really the way to do that. I had a uh, uh, listen to a QSO on my little QCX the other night. And I'd, I've got my uh, DX commander out of the backyard and I went out front, set it in the front yard close to where my radio is for this coming weekend. And I finally had a good antenna, a, a good matched 40 meter uh, antenna on it. And I had a uh, probably was 30 minutes or 40 minutes of these guys going back and forth. And this thing was decoding it almost perfectly. They were good. Uh, it was really it was fun, you know. I want to get to the point where what I do consistently comes up with a, uh, uh, a readable, decodable uh, thing. Anyway, I, I'm pretty good at getting the letters out, but my word grouping is still pretty bad. I'm wondering if there's some way I can get FL Digi to uh, mark you're the FL Digi expert here, uh, Clayton, uh, but yeah. uh, get it to uh, like when I'm got my key hooked to my. Uh, my radio, but the, what I do, you know, and I'm not actually transmitting, but I'm wondering if FL Digi would uh, decode what I do on my key. Does that make sense? Like this, you just point your mic at the at the radio, um, or if, if the speaker, if it goes in, if it comes out of the radio through USB into a sound card, yeah. you just take uh, FL yeah, Digi and use the mic input to be whatever um, whatever you're doing. If it's you know, if it's just your microphone. Um, that's sitting up to next to the speaker. Just have that be the input to the FL Digi, and sure, it'll pick it up just like everything else. Yeah, because uh, you know I've I've done had it decoding some, but it has to be really good code for FL Digi to be able to pick it up. I mean to decode it. So yeah. A few years ago, I took a model train club out to El Reno Museum and contacted some of the old telegraphers out there from the Rock Island. I think there was four or five of them. They stood with their back to each other and they were just going 90 miles a minute. And I was amazed they could tell you what was being said. But they could also tell you who said it. Yeah. And uh, um, Jerry Brody was a guy down here, uh, W5MCJ and uh, then later was W7DAD. He could do I have seen him do two 40 word a minute nets, um, one on 40 meters, one on 80 meters. He could listen to those, talk to me and transmit key, respond to one of those two nets um, all at the same time. Yeah, I came in to do voice conversations at once. Yeah. Yeah. Bill's seen that while he was talking to you. That's crazy. You know, I, I see, I think I do, I do a lot better when, uh, like there's an actual word coming out uh, rather than random letter stuff. Uh, I, I was telling the guys last night, I, I get A's and N's mixed up. To, to me, they sound, I have to stop and think, was the da first or the da second? To get yeah, you're right. listening to dits and da's. You got to think, yep. you got to think sound. Yep. But, but when I'm, but when I'm doing words, it's pretty obvious. Is it a vowel or a consonant? You know, I mean, I can, I can figure it out a lot quicker as I'm writing a word. Oh, that must be an A. You know, nobody goes T N da da da. You know, it's got to be T A. Uh, so anyway, it's just uh, words are easier than 
than random letters. But I'm going to get it eventually. But has anyone used the uh, program uh, G4FON to, to practice? That's what that's what that all these uh, the Morse code ones that I did were all done on that G4FON. It's a great practice tool. Yeah, yeah I've, I've used it. I like it. I'll say it again, Kim. So I've, I've used it. I've used that uh, uh, that program as well, and it, I like doing it. I like using it as well. But I I've, I actually use them play with three or four different. Hopefully, it'll have an effect, and I'll get I'll actually get going here soon. Yeah, there's there's that that program, and that's what I used, and it's the, it is so cool because you can add noise in the background, um, you can add fading, QSB fading in and out. I um, mean, it sounds just like a real uh, conversation. Yeah, it's a very it's a very good program. It says updated. Oh, that's Coke Trainer. <laughs> Well, I'm, 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 I'm sad we're not doing our live uh, club uh, yeah. field day. I got that that commander tuned up pretty good this time. Oh, good. If I could have the screen, I could give you a – I'd like to show yeah. it off a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Who, who are you? There you are, mate, co-host. Guard. Okay. <laughs> If it comes up, okay. Can I put it up? Well, that's still not too bad. I've got four wires on it. It nails 40, 20, uh, 15, 12, and 10 is usable with a with a tuner. But and it's all basically on the digital, on the on the lower third on yep. every single one. And all of it is below 1.5 to 1. So how many wires do you have hanging? That's four wires. I've got so, 40, 40, 15 is, is one wire, and then a separate okay. 20. Uh, I had a, a wire up there that I was going to tune for 10, and I knew it was long. And it it just hammered 12 perfectly. So I said, forget that. I'll add a wire and put my 10 <laughs> wire on. Uh, so anyway, that's what it's looking like right now. So I'm... I'm really eager to get out there and see what it'll do. Wow. But that's that's such a great back small yard antenna. And when it's really bad weather, it takes literally a minute to run out there and pick it up and just lay it down if you're gonna have a bad windstorm or ice or whatever. And uh, I'm sold on it. You know, which are we I saw something about a winter weather thing for tonight yeah yeah we might have a little dusting of snow oh yeah oh uh, my how many radios <laughs> on on kid uh i'm about well the squirrels have modified some of it but i think i'm 29 28 or 29 radials now the squirrels but eat it, the radials they cut them in half they chew on them Actually, I'm, 20, I'm on 27 because I have three three uh, stubs that I picked up. What you kind know. of peanut butter are you putting on those? <laughs> I got to find some other kind of flavored wire. You know, there, <laughs> there's something about mice and, and wires. It's like they can they yeah. they think there's something in there. They sense the energy and uh, well, they'll chew through you know into wires. <laughs> Ask Ken about the transformer in front of his house and his squirrel problem. Uh who? You and your squirrels. Oh, and former out. My high, I got medium tension lines run down the east side of the property. Christmas Day, uh, two two years ago or three, I forget. Our lights went out. The house went and everything blacked out. <laughs> and we went outside, and the squirrel had the. They've got grasshoppers on the end of this line. It the it comes out to the street, goes down, and goes underground. And they got grasshoppers open. The squirrel jumped across the grasshopper and got shorted across it. He connected whatever was on the other end of the side of that grasshopper up on one phase, 
and <laughs> set himself on fire, fell to the ground, and started a grass fire. Oh, my God. <laughs> then I had another, well, about a year later, somewhere not so terribly far from it, we had the same thing happen again, only this guy didn't, he wasn't as well cooked. It had required additional cooking to be edible. <laughs> but, I did, we had a lineman that uh, was here, and he said he went and did uh, uh, emergency uh, repairs in another state, and uh, he had a squirrel, went up there and found a squirrel, took the squirrel, threw it down on the ground, and two or three ladies fought over the squirrel. <laughs> 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 I, went, oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. It was pre-cooked. I mean, it was, it was ready to go. <laughs> yep. uh, there's another website uh, not a website another youtuber big clive anybody ever watch any big clive he's a scotsman and he tears stuff apart and frequently creates smoke and sparks and <laughs> anyway he was doing one of these uh, 120 volt hot dog roaster things where you stab the hot dog into the spikes and just run 120 volts through them ouch well, I had a tech do that when I worked it for Linda Soundtrack. But anyway, the uh, <laughs> he was hot. He was uh, right. he was supercharging it by plugging it into two fifty. So I imagine those dogs jumped right out of that thing after they. I haven't watched it yet. I got to watch that one. But he he's got an interesting <laughs> sense of humor, and he likes to dissect components and draw the schematics and and uh, explore some of the adventures that that come along with doing that. It's just an entertaining site. Big Clive. No, you, you're awesome. gonna, yeah, are you ever going to try his uh, unknown method of, of trimming a beard? Try what? He trims his beard using that funnel. Oh. <laughs> no, I've never. I haven't seen that one. I've got to see that. I have. He jams his beard down through a funnel and then clips the end off? <laughs> Don't take a look. He's a character. He is. He is a character, and, and he's he's very entertaining. <laughs> I did get uh, Grid Mapper going. Grid Tracker. Grid or Tracker grid going. I I can't remember the name of that. That's that's crazy. It's like on cue the gas station. Yeah. It took me four years to get the name of it down. I just wouldn't wouldn't accept it anyway. I love I love Grid Tracker. I mean, uh, I love Grid Tracker. It gives me an idea of seeing those little pinpoints uh, where I'm receiving it from, so I don't have to look them up. It, it's pretty cool. It's very, no, it's very cool. But uh, along the lines of your problems that you were having, I was receiving great when I get started. I got a decent an antenna hooked up and started to try to make contacts. I wasn't getting any power, and it took me about five iterations of the settings to get them all lined up to where it would actually output. But in the process of troubleshooting, I went and put the key on and uh, discovered the practice mode on the 7300 because I wasn't getting power on that. And then now I said, I'd start looking. So I got to learn a little bit about the, my radio and the uh, programming, but finally all came together really nice. It's cool. Huh. So grid tracker had nothing to do with the transmission problem, right? Nope. No, nope. that was purely the, uh, well, the uh, uh, radio setup, uh, RTS versus DTR. Or, oh, okay. Uh, yada, yada. And when just I finally keying. got everybody on the right power, page. It just wasn't keying. It was all there, but I thought I might have damaged the radio because it should have. It looked like it was keying up. It would give me the transmit light, but it just wouldn't put out any power. Uh. And, and I got an external power meter on it, and oh, no, there's no power, you know. So that oh, was supposed to fun. lick lick your thumb and forefinger and grab there, the antenna. Yeah, there you are. Uh -huh. <laughs> do not do that at yeah. home. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I was thinking about you, Mark, when I was hammering on that. <laughs> I bet you were. He was. He Thank was, you, Ken. He was yeah, smoking. What, what, <laughs> I was fat, dumb, and happy, and not even. Then I had to go try it. Well, as always, John snuck in. Hello, John. How's Indianapolis South? 
Oh, we're just a little chilly, but other than that, we're still damp from the rain we got today. <clears throat> well, if it was rain, it's not that chilly. That's good to know. Well, yeah, we got the snow uh, Monday, Sunday, oh. Sunday and Monday. So, and then it uh, then it turned to rain for us, and yay, washed all that away. So, other than that, doing all right. Just uh, hanging out. I got my uh, finally. Got my pat board working on my uh my radio i have a uh 450 a yesu 450d and i uh, put a pat board in it and finally got around to plugging in my uh plugging it into my uh, rtl uh rtl sdr dongle and voila works great what is a pat board uh, it's the panoramic display board oh gotcha yeah Good. Did you get your heat? Is that the most important thing? As a matter of fact, we did. Yes, <laughs> it was. It was put in last week. <clears throat> so yeah, they uh, they finished that up Thursday, and uh, we've been basking in the the heat of a new furnace. So it's very nice. Very good. Very good. Yeah, pretty good. Mike's there. Mike uh, eight KB five HX. What do you know, Mike? Oh, not much. Just uh, staying warm. Got my went to the doctor today. Got my regular flu shot late, but I I got it. Then I got a pneumonia shot, and she said, "That's the last one you'll ever need." And I said, "Bet me." That's what they told me five years ago. That's what are you saying, Doc? You need. What are you trying to tell them? <laughs> oh, wow. If you live long enough, you get several lifetime flu shot or pneumonia shots. <laughs> As well, long as he doesn't take that bet. Yeah. Like some, some show I was watching the other day, and this older guy was buying a car, and the salesman said, you know, this car ought to last you 15 years. And the old guy suddenly realized that that's probably the last car he'll ever need to buy then, you know, cause he's in his seventies. And anyway, he couldn't get himself to buy it, but, uh, that's where I'm at too. You know, I'm going <laughs> to buy one more truck. <laughs> that's it. <clears throat> it. Who else is looking around? Uh, uh, Steve's slide slid in there. Hello, Steve. Hello, Mr. Vince. Hey. <clears throat> I say, hey, hey, how's it going? Good. How you doing? No, I'm not bad. No. I've oh, been, there everybody is. I've been working the vaccination pods up at El Reno. Oh, did you go do some of those? Yeah, I have been for the well, last, last several weeks now. You doing the getting, church or the... Uh, I'm up to church, the Baptist church. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing my first one up there on Friday. Just wondered... Uh, I'll be there. I will too. 7.45. <laughs> I keep but getting I think, emails all the time. It looks like fun to go do, but yeah. Well, they said, uh, my wife and I both volunteered. Uh, they, we keep getting these things and, uh, they had a thousand volunteers last week. Statewide. Yeah. I don't doubt it. They were looking for 56 different locations. Yeah. So that's, you know, MRC is needing lots of people. So yeah, well, they're getting lots of people and that's kind of overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> the that's background good. checks and all that so oh new people you're talking about yeah yeah they had oh. a thousand new people sign up last week so oh <laughs> that's why i probably have to go tomorrow and help david grizzle get the badge printer working <laughs> <laughs> well you know they they one of the things they tell you is don't don't uh, volunteer unless you have a badge and then they turn around and say now nah, never mind we can't get enough badges quit Just, that's probably you know, explains Oh. Well, the, the Baptist Church pod is moving to Mustang Community Center Monday. Oh. So where's the Baptist Church? I guess I'll in, find it. But... In El Reno. Well, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I got oh, that part. Uh, <laughs> where are you coming I'm from? Piedmont. Uh, well, if you come down I-40, Country Club exit, yeah. the Country Club Road, First stoplight, turn right, 
and then okay. just followed on down, you'll see the uh, fire department turn yep. in and go up on the hill and church is up. Let's stay just south of the fire department. Oh. Yeah, I know where the I know where the fire department is actually. So yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm waiting That's... for the Piedmont branch to open up, but. <laughs> Well, they are they going to in that same county, Canadian? Yeah, they're probably going to pick one. I know that's what uh, uh, Rodney said down here is that they would pick one um, yeah. for the area. Nobody in Piedmont believes there is a disease, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, they don't need a pod. No, they don't. No masks. I mean, there's just total. Just... Well, there's some places to hang out in Piedmont where you would need a mask. Like which gas store do you go to? <laughs> I don't go to any of them really, but because nobody's wearing a mask. <laughs> but uh, actually, the cafe there. Is, Sorry, Lynn. I go that little cafe there. It's in the center of the old part of downtown. The Asian folks that have a little bit of everything. Oh yeah, yeah. It used to be the Piedmont Diner, and now it's Piedmont Cuisine. Yeah. It's, yeah. Always Chinese. interesting. Hey, Sam? Yeah. Last time I was there, it had Mexican and Italian also. So. If you volunteer for the Merc, do you have to have your flu, your uh, COVID shot first? No. Oh, that's no. interesting. <laughs> no, they give you PPE uh, when you when you go to the pod. And uh, it uh, if they have shots left over, at the end of the day, you may get one, yeah. but, uh, but you don't have to have it to work. I was on a Zoom meeting today, and they said in El Reno they threw away a bunch because they had like 26 no-shows. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. I mean, people are desperate to get them, and they're throwing them away. Yeah. But, but I mean, choice. Once they warmed up, you can't put them back in the freezer. No, yeah. you can't refreeze them, and... Uh, you know, my wife's been uh, giving them at Baptist. She's a nurse, and she's been volunteering to go in and, and administer shots there. And uh, mostly, the, mostly employees. I think they're just now starting to open up to public, but uh, they don't throw any of them away. They, they uh, that's how she ended up getting hers. Actually, they had extra this one day. So, yeah, I know uh, uh, Oklahoma County um, Johnny uh, Wingate up there. Uh, they said if you wanted to be on a if you were able to come to Oklahoma City within an hour they were coming up with a list of uh, um, you know if they had those, the extras that they would call people and, and say get up here now we'll get you a shot and uh, hmm. uh, you know that's that's a good way to do that yeah well I somebody told me the other day that they got a call you know somebody that they knew worked at the pod and said can you get here <laughs> You know, in 30 minutes, we got extras and yeah. just ran over, got one. But uh, Which version are they doing out now, Reno? Pfizer or Moderna? Oh, Steve? Most, most of the first shots are Moderna, and they have been doing second shot Pfizer's. I got my second Pfizer last week. They're not crossing them, are they? No. No, you gotta. Okay. I gotta be honest. I don't know what I got today, but I'm going when you back. Go, when you go back, four weeks or three weeks? Three. So it's probably you got Pfizer. Pfizer. It's Pfizer. You got Pfizer. Yeah. yeah. They should have given you a shot card, and it'll say on the card. No, it, it probably does. I didn't read it. Come on, he's a ham. Give him a break. He's not going to read that. <laughs> oh, my uh, wife. My wife confiscated it, so I wouldn't lose it. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, that's smart. Well, definitely don't lose it because it will come in handy when you want your second one. Yeah, well, they already scheduled it. That's a nice thing. I mean, right, right, right when they gave me the shot, they gave me the paper and said, come back in three weeks, here you are. Which is something, I guess it's new, new, more more recently uh, being yeah. done that way. So that makes sense. Did they actually give you an appointment or was that, it uh, uh, not earlier than this date? No, an appointment. You come back awesome. three weeks from today come at this back time. Right here at the same time, here at the same time in three weeks. And I gave you the, the card with the date and everything on it. And yeah. 
Uh, so it's an actual appointment to go back and get the second one, which I thought was a glimmer of intelligence in this whole insane. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they they did that at first, and then they said, "Oh no, we got a better way." And then they realized that wasn't the better way, and then they switched yeah. back. Yeah, no, that definitely was a <clears throat> one of those cluster things. Well, it's a big was learning that, curve. Was that a peanut cluster? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yes, and, and pecans work as well. Yeah, you know, by the time we have to get next year's shot, it'll uh, have it down to an art by then. So yeah, we'll probably have a combo, flu, flu and and COVID. So it'll be a a fluid or a, a something a fluvid shot. Well, if they figure out some way not to have to keep it as cold, I mean that's the problem now. Is you yeah. know you can't go to your doctor because he doesn't have the, the capability of keeping it cold enough. Oh, yeah, you put it on dry ice be- for five days, so it's it's not that bad. It's just yeah. a matter of Hopefully getting it out. Something. Well, I see. I barely see Thomas Hayes in the in the mit in the mist. You yeah. see him in there? Yeah. <laughs> so when when he talks, room. it lights up <laughs> <laughs> like glow in the dark. Are you uh, hiding from the the rest of the family? Uh, no, little, little baby girl's asleep. Just kind of things are slowing down and going to bed for the night around here. Got it. Got hey, it. Peter core, check the chat chat. When you get a second, if you're really there, we got, uh, we got our three little radio, uh, trackers in the mail, Mark. Oh, uh, the, the QRP labs one. Uh huh. Awesome. The students have their hands on two, and I, I stashed another one away, so it'll be it'll at least survive. <laughs> <laughs> and I have mine, so that's <laughs> four. <laughs> Nifty, that was a really great video he did, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I watched it. it really kind of went over everything. Yep. It, it, um, Thomas uh, Madlin, W5KUB, did a great presentation for the Vienna Wireless Society Friday, and he's got a video out there that... Uh, goes through the whole balloon launch uh the design the and how it operates and i didn't think about the the changing the solar angle for winter and summer um i didn't i hadn't considered the the difference in storm locations i mean it's you know once you hear them say it's like oh yeah that's common sense <laughs> yeah that's uh yeah you want you want to fly in our winter time so that all the storms stay on the other side of the planet from you yep. they're down in uh, south america and uh, see if we can see them right now on Windy. Too bad it's uh, too bad it's just now getting into storm season for us. Yeah. Also, did you hear one remark you made was that you know the, the lift margin is so small that they may only have like eight grams of lift. That yeah. One time they launched into a cloud and enough water rain droplets got onto it that the whole thing came right back down. Yeah, it came down in. Uh, just over the border in uh, Georgia or something. Um, it, just, knows, yeah. it didn't make that. I remember that one happening, uh, watching that one in real life. Um, somebody went and got it. I can't remember who it was, but Bill, um, <laughs> Bill Brown, the guy that works with him, uh, knew the people that went and got it. And, and uh, it was an instant fail. Yeah. It'll, it'll definitely give him a challenge, especially for keeping the weight really, really low. The, uh, um, the, any idea on balloons? Are you going to let them, it, what, you're just going to give them the tractor and then they have to come up with everything else or how you could, how you do we'll, that? We'll buy stuff for them, but uh, I want them to go, the students to go through you know, a little bit of a search, a little bit of a, maybe even design choice on the balloon. It seems that the reason they use those balloons isn't necessarily, isn't even, uh, do the material it's just i guess permeability just the fact they can hold on to the the helium or hydrogen long enough so yep. uh, be interesting to do some material comparisons like see what actually kind of plastic it is and how they seal them and because 180 bucks per balloon is pretty steep yeah um bill's i think if i remember his notes bill uh, brown's deal um it was, uh, I think, 100 and 
he had a deal that was like 190 bucks was tracker and balloon and everything. Um, yeah. and solar cell, not what you want to do. Obviously you want to let them figure it all out, but if right. you're wanting to do a balloon, uh, that's the way to go. And you just grab that one package. Now, are you going to go helium or hydrogen or what do you have capabilities of? Uh, we, we do either. I mean, I think placing an order for pure one or the other is, is equally easy. So uh, I, I'm not as worried about, you know, he really played up the danger of a hydrogen filled balloon as being a real big, scary thing, but it, it, it's not so bad until you let the, until you let it get pre-mixed with oxygen or pre-mixed with air. That's yeah. when they'll pop and, you know, explode. If you just burn hydrogen by accident, it's just a little bit of a flame ball from the side. Yeah. So my wife actually in eighth grade science will fill balloons with hydrogen that she makes. And yeah. I don't understand that process, but good thing she does. And uh, that day, it's she uh, also... lye and aluminum. Okay. <laughs> and it's uh, lye and lye aluminum foil and water. And in a pot bottle. That's all you need, dude. She will. Uh, we used wait, to do I know, that. With... I know what you've been making with that arrangement. <laughs> we, yes. we used to no, do that. I, with... no, I've, I, I've done it many years ago. It, it does work. Yeah, we used to do it with Drano and uh, and and tin foil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but uh, basically Drano and tin foil. Uh, if you could get actual pure lye, it was even better. Yeah. Well. Well, Drano was probably close to pure lye anyway. Right. Yeah. It's Maybe like some reason. surfactants, but. Yeah. They, she'll actually make the balloon. She'll come home that day with a headache from the, the balloons popping everywhere. And, <laughs> and she'll tell everybody that, you know, Hey, this is going to happen. And the whole school shows up because she, they think the building is going to fall apart because it's right. not, it's definitely a order of magnitude or two higher in, in yeah. sound than a normal balloon. Yeah. It'll, it'll be an interesting design challenge for them to pick the right plastic. And I wouldn't be surprised if they want to try to make, a balloon we'll see if they'll be able to heat seal it or whatever the case may be oh that's but, a that's a cool idea yeah if they could get the right type of plastic to use and maybe it's, we'll probably just discover like most things it's worth just paying for the professional one and, and doing it <laughs> go, right go down to the uh, go down to the um, homeland store and pick up a mylar balloon yeah he was saying those you know he gave them a lifespan of maybe a week maybe two weeks well, he had one that got to Japan that was a Mylar. Yeah, and, and there's one that's gone around the world seven times that was just a cheap Mylar party balloon. Yep. So it and just, he, I guess your luck varies. I mean, it's, it's also possible we could just string several of them together. So that way... If, he, you know, he did talk about that. You and I had had that discussion. Could you do multiples? And he said he yeah. had done a couple multiples, uh, put two or three of those party balloons together. I don't know why you wouldn't, but... Uh, or surface area, maybe I don't know. Eh, it shouldn't matter so much. Uh, it says the uh, uh, says the says the aeronautical engineer. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Is it like the the surface area to volume ratio improves as diameter gets bigger? So basically, the bigger balloon you use, something one larger balloon is probably better in terms of lift capability than having you know four or five smaller balloons for equal volume. I, that, I would believe that. Yeah. yeah, I would believe that as a learning edge, as a learning piece, it might be better to do it the other way. But and also, who knows? like reliability, right? So it's sometimes nice that you could probably lose a balloon, or one balloon could leak its helium, while another, while the other four or five are still going strong. Oh yeah, redundancy. Yeah. It'd be rabe. Redundant array of independent balloons. There's probably some good opportunities for acronyms in this, huh? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think we could, I think we should. We, another thing I thought of that, that these guys are going to have to learn is maidenhead grid squares. I yeah. doubt about non hams to understand what those mean. So, so I'll tell a, I'll tell a story on myself. I, I wanted to, I forget what it was for. Maybe it was for field day or something. No, it was for whisper. I wanted to take whisper data download and then take the GPS location that was automatically filled by QRZ and then turn that into a maidenhead and also vice versa. So I wrote, I spent way too long writing like a MATLAB code that would do that. It would convert from maidenhead to GPS and GPS to maidenhead if I wanted it to. It took a while because you didn't have to learn all the different arrangements and stuff. 
And then so I was really happy to finish it. I was like, okay, cool. I can finally do, do what I wanted to. I can figure out headings to where this was heard. And so I go to download my whisper data and see that the server had already inserted all the data I needed. I didn't have to write a thing. <laughs> I just wasted like a whole day's time. <laughs> yeah, thanks for playing, but we got that for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just good, good practice for you. Well, that's I probably need it. <laughs> Other projects are people doing. <laughs> What's Ken got going? Surely Ken's got something going. Nothing. More He's code. Uh, field day. Which one? Who? Which one? <laughs> Oh, I don't know who's got a who's got a project going. That'd be it's a good good question. I'll maybe turn apart my bench again, but I don't think I'll be doing it till after Winter Field Day. There you go. Who's ready for Winter Field Day? That's the question. Actually, I'm ready for Winter Field Day. Thomas, you're gonna get anybody close to you this time. What? Are you gonna get anybody close to you in points this time? Oh, uh, I honestly, I'm full speed back in like professor mode so i don't think i'll be doing winter field day oh then we have a chance oh come on you guys you guys schooled me i think last time that the, the club did yeah well yeah but it was one of you sitting at home so well, you can do that once i don't know if i i don't know how often i'll do that <laughs> up straight in a row Ooh, it was rough how, how long how long did you actually operate about 23 and a half hours oh my gosh <laughs> Oh my god. Wow. I really well, sleep at like 9 a.m. for 30 minutes in my chair. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, that that's not me. <laughs> digital modes, I, I you know, my, I would have lost my voice by then, but digital modes were the way to do it. Just yeah. Keep going. Yeah, I sat down at 10 o'clock whenever the radio was sitting there open. I sat there at 10 o'clock or so and and uh I don't know, Peter came by about 3 30 or so and, and worked for a a while and i think we were still going when breakfast showed up it was yeah. i didn't intend to stay overnight but by golly i did you guys had a lot of you you had a pile up going oh man they were just on it and that was that that goofy vertical your verticals never work but that goofy vertical that that was set up there as a temporary man that thing just worked like a bear all night long um, 40, 20, I think, I, I don't know if I tried 10, but I, I was having such good luck on 40 and 20. I just stayed on there for those two nights. Yeah. Man, oh, that vertical. Vertical don't work, work huh? 15, no, they're terrible. It, <laughs> it'll run 15 as well. It ran 15. Did I don't know if I went to 15, but, yeah. but I was just moving on all, both those bands. Was and, that at the fire station? Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. You and Ken set it up. Uh, yeah. But we originally did it with the 718 I've got now, and then yeah. we sw switched it to the other radio. Ken, what was that other radio he was using? Somebody had a 7300, is what I was on. Uh, well, you had, well, we had, the, you had your 718 there. Yeah. And we ran that, and then uh, somebody brought in a 7300, and I oh, forget okay. who brought it in, but that's when I, well, anyway, I thought, that, I thought it was a 706 Mark II G. Well, we've we had, had that one of those past. too. Yeah, we had one of those too. Yeah, there was a uh, uh, there was a Yesu rig at first that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the one that's in the in the EOC. Um, geez, what is that? I forget. I forget Club at this radio, point. But whatever it is, it was uh, a very foreign radio for me as far as my for me to, for me to operate because I hadn't, hadn't really. It's nice to know your radio a little bit when you're doing that, but yeah. But your 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 uh, setup out there, Ken, you had on the yard to the side of the building. Yeah, the, no, that was a uh, thirty-two the, foot. The DX Commander. Yeah. Yeah. Or that's good. One, that, that's the one I that I showed a minute ago with the uh, with four wires on it. Yeah. We only had three wires on it before, but the ten didn't come in very good, and I'd forgotten my antenna analyzer, so. Uh, well, you got 20 up, 20 and 40 up, and 20 and 40 gives you 15. So, yeah, uh, 
that, that with two wires you can get three bands. Yeah, we the intent was to put that up and get it up quick and get after it and then do something different. But man, that thing just worked so well. Just I, I'm not disappointed with mine at all, especially yeah. the ease with which you can set it up and take it down. One man can. I mean, the thing only weighs about with all the wires on it and all the hardware, it only weighs about seven, eight pounds, I think, nine maybe. And I guy it at about five feet and then let the top wiggle in the wind. And the uh, I was on top of the fire training tower while you guys were setting that up, and I went, oh, look, they're going to set that up with just two of them. They said they needed three or more. Oh, wait, they're done. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Uh, the, the little 20-foot, uh, uh, the little 20 foot, 20 foot, uh fishing pole it has just been an awesome 20 meter for me single counterpoise at about 24 inches off the ground uh and uh, anyway that, that's a five minute setup i think the hardest I, part I, we had was the radials that we run off of the big one yeah the radials are a pain they really are that's why the i like that that 20 meter uh 20 foot uh shakespeare thing Especially if you're going to go out camping, set up quick somewhere uh, with a single counterpoise. I've talked to Costa Rica, East Coast, East Coast, West Coast, Newfoundland, uh, uh, Florida, several spots. And I mean, it's just it's a five minute antenna. With, I, mean, it, I got twenty eight dollars in it. That uh, the larger intended. How many radials did we actually put uh, put on we the had, ground? We had twenty set up that time because I left it. The I'd made ten more, and it was rigged up to enable it to hook ten more on it. But I didn't. We only had twenty on it. So, did um, would would a little bean bag at the end of those radials work? Yes, for a setup. I was even thinking about just maybe some uh, one ounce, two ounce. Uh, sinkers oh fishing weight uh, yeah just just drop them on the end i mean they would just or just hook it on the end of the wire yeah and uh, that way you just throw them out and yeah but if, if you if you throw them out and they curl up a little bit they're still going to work yeah 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 that's what i was thinking just a bean bag you know a sandbag or something that yeah. you know, a little tiny a little light one you wouldn't cornhole bag want. things yeah that's what yeah. i was thinking yeah a little bean bag like you used to throw it at your, at your brother or sister <laughs> you know. don't know what you're talking about uh-huh. I can uh, neither confirm nor deny that. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, by the way, Ken, I did go ahead and remove the hooks from my crappie pole so I can set Thank that you. <laughs> without uh, further injury. That 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 crappie rod is a nice little antenna thing, but if you leave the hook on, it's a little dangerous. Uh, oh, ask me how we know. know. Ask me how we know. <laughs> <laughs> both, nope. got, both bled on it. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, had to leave some DNA somewhere. <laughs> well, you know, if you don't bleed, then it's not you're not doing the job right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, <laughs> oh wow, I do everything well, right then. <laughs> blood, sacri <laughs> blood sacrifice makes most projects work better. Yes, that's right. It's conductive, right? Of course, it, it is <laughs> really very conductive. <laughs> yeah, my little project the... is I'm planning on breaking out my seventy one hundred and taking it over to Ken for winter field day. Give it a trial. With there my crop, that worked. Mark, Mark, you remember that when you said that had that radio set up running out to his big antenna, you were only what fifty feet away from the antenna. Yeah. Oh yeah, it wasn't much. It was no, probably two fifty foot runs. I mean, or maybe it was. Maybe it was one. I don't know. It wasn't I very did, far. I remember you guys had it set up, and I just I went over there. It was like ten o'clock, and. There was nobody there. A couple guys talking, and and I just grabbed the radio and and uh, took off. And and next thing I knew, it was three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I hope we get to do a live field day again in June. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, get I'll be ready. I'll get be ready for shots. it. Yeah, yep. I'll be ready for it. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That it was. So everybody got anything set up? Who's going to work winter field day? I am. Well, I'm planning to. I'm planning on it. Yeah. Six, seven, eight hours anyway, maybe. Yeah. At least Saturday. 
Yeah, I'm I'm gonna, rain. It'd be fun to drop in for a couple hours. I need to. I haven't touched the radio in a while. Uh, whoever has contact with those weather gods down there in Norman, you know, postpone that rain or get it over with in a hurry. One or the other. Oh, well, you, that, sounds like it's going to be Saturday morning, and maybe maybe we'll be good after that. So, well, last I heard, but this is Oklahoma. What uh, what are they doing for? Uh, is it rain Saturday morning? Friday is Friday supposed to be a good day. Friday is a good day. Saturday morning, about forty percent chance. Yeah, all so right. I need, I need to put up an antenna. Friday is what you're telling me, huh? Yeah, got it. I've heard 60 and 70 percent. That was early, the early this morning. But so, Sunday is going to be gorgeous, so Sunday morning will be fine. But and so it sounds like most of Saturday probably be okay. It's going to take me about. But I laid it down. Since that pole is in the front yard, I didn't leave it out. But it only take a few minutes to set up now. You're going to set up the, the DX commander? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. went ahead and set the radial field in the front yard, and so all I got to do is plug them in. They're, they're, they're Anderson power pole connected, so plug those into the ground plate, stand it up, and the tie, the guy lines are laying there. Just <coughs> set it, you know, and they're waist, they're chest high, so I just stand there and tie them on, and we're ready to rock. Throw the throw, throw coax on it. I I like that antenna. It's uh... yeah, I do too. I just kind of the really reason I grabbed that radio was just to see what the antenna was like, and uh, man, it was solid all night. Well, I'm gonna try one. I've got the other pole. I want to try another, uh, just a single wire forty meter with it, and maybe. Uh, uh, eight radials, just a small, small number of small radial field, but longer wire. And with that uh, QCX, let's see how that works. Uh, you do about the squirrels? Well, I'd, I just have to be out there and, and hammer them. I, what I'd like to do is electrify that, disconnect the antenna, put a fence charger on those wires. Yeah. <laughs> and video and then videotape it. I've got a fence charger you can borrow. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, I'll bet you do that for a few days and they'll leave them the hell alone. They might. They might. Uh, well, how many radials, radials are uh, recommended for that antenna? And then you, actually, you, you get diminishing returns over, if you get 16, yeah, you'll get yeah. a good, you'll get good results. Mm -hmm. If you go beyond 30, the, you've reached the, the point of diminishing returns. So you put 60 out there, you're not going to be that much better than 30 or 32 or whatever. I mean, it, no, 112. It's, that's what they, it's almost that's an what exponential say. decay. Big time. So, but four is put, good enough. 16 is awesome. And 16 would work real good. Yeah. 16 would work real good with it. And, and if you, you know, you double that, it's going to be a lot, a little better. It'll probably be noticeably better, but only barely. We but, didn't have any problem with the 20 we had on there. No, we didn't have any trouble at all with 20, and I ran it with 20 for a long time. Hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah. But 16 to work. Because if you want to make a, a portable rig that you don't have to spend a long time untangling those stupid <laughs> radio wires. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you just make your little bean bag, like a cornhole bag, and then wrap the, the wires around them. That's maybe not a bad idea. And, are and you? Are you? Surely who just oh, showed up, Mark? Math, Matthew. That is trouble. Man. Long time no see. <laughs> Lewis. So, I finally What's had up, time. man? Uh, currently sealing. Got it. Great. Fits right in here. Awesome. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Which too. Yeah. I finally had time to get in here after I I I got into the Silver Air Patrol about in the summer and its meetings are at six thirty to like sometimes from seven thirty to eight or it's just and I I keep forgetting to join and but it was a good night to join and I have a few stuff that I'd like to share once you guys continue on your subject. Cool. Did you get to visit with uh, Jerry Krieger? 
Uh, papers, communications guy. No, he's, he's a ham. He's one of us. Well, he's not there. Okay, where are you doing the CIP out of Norman? Uh, yeah, I'm in the Norman Composite Squadron. Yeah, so hey, that's Matt. where Jerry is, I think. Yeah, yeah, Matt, yeah. P Peter here. I was, I was trying to get you on a repeater the other day. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what, what Mark said there, go look up Jerry Krieger. He's in the club, he's an active ham and. If you want to know how you want to do comms in CAP and and, uh, and the Air Force and everything else, he's the guy to go to, and he will give you everything, all the leads you need. Can I get his call sign real quick? And and for JCX, is that right? I don't. It's yeah. something close to that. It's definitely N five, and that the other letters are in there, but I'm not sure that's the. There's right only order. 26 of them. Just make one up, Peter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I'm here for. But here yeah, for. go look him up. Tell him your scars, your ham, and you know you you you've oh, got, yeah. you've got your radio yeah. background, and you want to see you know where, where you can take that. Uh, with, no, with that's not right. Career, you know, career or whatever else, and he will be. I think he'll be delighted. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Yeah, I was actually, that's one of the reasons why I got into uh, CAP was because I really wanted to do a lot more emergency communications and just try to, trying to broaden my organizations so I can help in any ways that I can, if I can. And look good on a resume, baby. Yeah, hey, hopefully. You got to watch out for us, CAP guys. We're nothing but trouble. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the cool thing is. There it is. All right, thank you. And the cool thing is, there's actually a lot of there's a lot of kids in there that are pretty similar to my mindset of wanting to be radio communications. And I was able to convince one to become a ham, and he he got on the repeater once. <laughs> it seems he's even worse, Mike Shy, than me. But hopefully, I can get some more people in there to be um, hams, youth hams, because that's always you, fun. Yeah. You had somebody, the guy that passed his test the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember who it was. You know what I'm talking about? uh my memory does not serve me <laughs> somebody from I, I can't remember who it was he passed his test and he said uh matt lewis sent me up here it's like oh my goodness oh okay it was yeah. it, uh, who was that i said was it oh go ahead he used he used to come around he used to like us. throw, now he throw out names and i'll tell you who it was because I, I i'm I, I will look out uh, i'm just i was gonna look at the scars um letter and see who passed on that maybe see if i recognize any of them yeah. oh yeah, yeah that's yeah yeah was it just this past month or yeah, yeah. okay yeah because there there was a group that i was trying to get licensed and then i kind of died out after this, quarantine started this was yeah. a uh, yeah that oh, was yeah. that group that we were dealing with before but uh mm -hmm. um let's see the spreadsheet would open uh it wasn't uh was it Patrick? I have, let me look at their last names. I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> I've never heard of a Patrick. Unless it's, it's not coming to my senses. It's not that's, Kim. It's not Billy. That's that's December. Oh, okay. So that's December. So it has there Okay. So maybe it was Joshua further Carl. back than I remember. Joshua Carl, maybe? I have no idea. Let me, let me look at some last names. <laughs> I do okay. remember him saying that, though. Yeah. Maybe that's longer ago than we think. No, mm. that would mean we're aged, and that wouldn't work very well. Well, I can oh, look no. through the past letters and just kind of do it and just look through there. I, I have nothing better to do. Uh, we only we only realized that we should start doing that <laughs> last yeah. month. Yeah, last month. <laughs> somebody uh, somebody gave in, us a hard... It, it was in the newsletter prior to that. Yeah. So, so okay. The uh, Well... <laughs> We hadn't been putting in the newsletter, and somebody took us to task about that at either at the last meeting or at one of last these scars discussions. meetings. Like, yeah, hey, and it was like, idea. yeah, yeah. I was like, I, I don't know why we haven't been doing that. <laughs> so we started doing it because we should. Yeah, I don't know. It's all those guys that reads the actual newsletter, you know, every week. Mark is the only one. Tries to take Mark to to task, you know, on it. I leave him a nugget so he can find something. <laughs> oh, okay. That's clever. Yeah, well, I usually find it, too. Yes, he's done pretty well. <laughs> he's done pretty well.
Easter egg in the newsletter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, he does. He'll leave me at least one somewhere <laughs> in it. And I, he, that way he knows I've read the newsletter from top to bottom. Yeah. If Mark <laughs> complains, I'm happy. Did you, uh, Matt, did you get his call sign here and his information? Uh, yes. I, I remember the call sign. Yes. So I'll contact him. Thank you for that information. And he'll, uh, he'll wear you out. And that's good. So he'll, well, after getting used to talking with half the guys in the club, I think I'll, I think I'm ready for it. <laughs> yep. yep. Oh, no, yes. he's a, he's a brigade commander. I don't know. He does like for a, a whole region. He's, so. he's an he's, officer. Yeah. He's, 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 he's been in a stroke. while. So yeah. Yeah. He's got stroke. Yeah, I He'd can be a see good one to get along with. Yeah. He would yeah. be. I, if he's in, if, if he's willing to talk to me, cause the one thing that kind of freaked oh. me out, is, uh, oh, he'll talk to you. That's not an issue. No. Well, the only thing that's kind of freaked me out. So when I first started, I've had basically no no type of military ranking experience or anything at all. So it's not going to stop Jerry from talking to you. Okay. Okay. It's all I know. I've I've met some uh, seniors that we call them that are just like you don't talk to me unless you got a reason, and if not, go talk to your flight sergeant over there and don't get near me. In uniform, I actually don't know what he's like. He he yeah. may be he may well be different in uniform, but but the rest of the time, getting Jerry to talk is not it's not an issue. Hey Matt, okay. welcome to the military. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Matt, also, uh, I've been, I've also, been doing, oh, sorry. Also, welcome to corporate life because yeah, there's people like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh That's yeah. True. Oh yeah. That's true. <laughs> Matt, no, uh, well, well, uh, I've been doing CAT for a few years, so uh, feel free to email me at n0dlb at hotmail uh, if you want to uh, sound some things out, but I've been doing CAPCOM for a few years. Okay. All right. Thank you. He's up Definitely. in Indianapolis. And... Yeah, I'm, I'm in Indianapolis, but I've been in Kansas City. Uh, I haven't done much CAT. I haven't been really done any CAP in Oklahoma City, but I have done it a few couple other places so it's you it should be all the same yeah it, well you, you'll you'll already know more than me like i that i'm working on getting the mro which is the qualification if for, for non-cap people it's the uh radio well, actually go ahead you will find this interesting and my mro is actually expired <laughs> i've had an mre those are pretty good uh, yeah, even expired them. MREs are usually pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, yeah uh, M M M MRO for those uh, who aren't aware is mission radio operator. It's kind of the basic where you start off and cap is uh, talking on the radio. But uh, actually, uh, my mission radio operator is not current because I've been haven't been in an exercise for a while. So uh, fair enough. Yeah, I don't like to exercise either. It's a problem. <laughs> yeah, we can tell. Yeah. Said that. <laughs> All of us. <laughs> I didn't disagree. Oh. I thought I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I just yeah. thought that. <laughs> Sorry, Peter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, As I said, I didn't disagree. <laughs> Good. So, did you have questions, Matt? Are you uh... good? Gosh, what is that? Oh, uh, kind of. I, well, all I know is, um, I, I guess I'll ask some pointers for my kind of project that I'm working on. So, I got a little new, uh, another mobile rig that I'm going to be using as a base station. It's just a little dual band, 25 watt uh, mobile thing. Um, it was cheap, which is the best way I like things. Um, to be even more cheap, I'm going to be putting up a a hopefully an antenna in the attic so i can be ready to uh, do some skywarn stuff i mark i have not sent you the certifications for it but i participate i did the two classes in october of 2020 so i need to send those to you you should yes i need to i'm also uh, go ahead the schedule's out for the spring okay um uh, it's all online but yep it's all schedule, online but yeah. schedule for what is that Sky just, spotting Skywars. class so oh, doesn't, doesn't hurt classes. to take it all every year again yeah that's yeah. i recorded each of the classes and i know before like in march i'm definitely going to rewatch them to make sure i'm up to date before everything starts hitting the fan as per usual if you um, lose but, them if you lose that they're on the scars aries page okay 
I will make sure to rub it out. I could, I, I've been trying. I've had other people who have asked me for those like recordings and a lot of stuff. Cause again, a lot of people in cap have also just been, uh, the one thing that I don't, that I've kind of seen that I don't like about the squadron I'm in, they don't participate as much in emergency services. At least most of the members I've seen, they're all wanting to be, we're going to be pilots. We're going to go fly planes. And then there's all the, maybe like three other people who are like, we really want to do emergency services and there's no one else to help us. <laughs> except, except our actual squadron commander. Our squadron commander is, he does emergency services. But all those guys are hams. Yes, yes, hopefully, hopefully. I don't think our squadron commander is, because he's pretty young. He's a, yeah, I say that, and he's going to be like in his 40s. I don't know. He seemed young when I met him one time. That's, yeah, that's young. Yeah. A mere, ba- a mere baby. <laughs> the, uh, I just, the link for the spotter talks this spring is in the chat window. Okay, I'll thank put you. that on and the. Uh, and it's on the Facebook homepage of, the, of W5NOR. Oh, is okay. It? Okay, good. Oh, there, yeah, there's quite a bunch. Good, 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 good. good. Yeah, right. they, they've got them broken out by county this year, which is fine, but they also have four, three or four open dates as well. So I would try to go for the one, there's a Cleveland County one. I would try to get in that one just to leave room for other county. You know, you know what I'm saying? Well, um, but, but what Rick said is they're going to be tailored to each individual set of counties. Oh, okay. So there you go. So that, he said his statement was they're tar- tailored for each county section. So if if you're in Harper Ellis Woodward, they're going to reference stuff in Harvest Harper Ellis Woodward. Uh, Vance and radar then, instead of Twin yeah, Lakes and yeah. Yeah. And Cleveland County and you know that kind of stuff locally. But but Rick said it you are welcome to attend anyone anywhere. Um that, that if you can't make the one in your county, um, feel free to jump to whatever you need to. So, uh, okay. uh, I think it's probably norm or Cleveland is probably going to be the Cleveland, Oklahoma is probably going to be the biggest packed one anyway. So if we get people out of this into other ones, it probably helps. Okay. Probably does, I will, yeah. I'll make sure to keep that on my brain and put that in my calendar. I'll probably sign up for one of those, uh, probably tonight if I have time. Yeah. Uh, price is definitely okay. right. So price okay. is right. Yeah. Wait, is it? The food's zero. great. It's zero. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I felt like I learned quite a bunch in the October one. It it, it was definitely my first time like looking at actual how huh? storms work. Oh yeah. You'll, work, you'll learn more the second time because now it's not freaking you out. So, yeah. So well, great. the I the first class like because I took the advanced and the uh, just basic one. The basic one wasn't too hard to understand. I think the hardest thing is just the terminology for each of the stuff. And actually, mm-hmm. I, I was kind of I intimidated by so they gave all the diagrams what stuff's going to look for but when you actually i was afraid when you actually are looking at a storm that's going to be kind of hard to tell and describe which i guess that just comes with experience of actually looking yep. at it exactly okay well hopefully i yeah i guess that's bad and good hopefully i get to see storms but hopefully i don't have to have anything that destroys property <laughs> or antennas because i don't want my antennas to go down again I've actually not had because the only antennas that I have outside are just my HF dipole that I have, and surprisingly, it has not fallen down once, which is really surprising me. But um, I'm getting uh, kind of off subject. Uh, Miss Mark, I have a question for you, I guess. Yes, sir. Um, I again, one of the kids that I was that I met in Cap that got his ham license. I that might have been the guy. I don't know. I thought he took a took licenses a different he took his testing a different place even though i emphasize you should have got it at <laughs> scars because they were taking it somewhere in i think it was edmund or somewhere and they had the, the 15 dollar uh fee which is total yeah. bull crap that's yeah. edmund yeah, yeah, yeah sorry it's gotta be edmund. <laughs> no, no offense to the edmund people i just i really like the free change is bad but go ahead <laughs> okay yeah um but uh he has uh, he's he's got kind of the same mindset as me as he really he's really interested in getting an emergency services i said i think i sent an email to you mark i don't know if you've got it or not but it was kind of explaining him no matter what he's wanting to join the club i'm pretty sure and he's already i think he's part of aries i think he was able to sign up for that but yeah he's interested in getting the club who do you think i should contact to get him what do you think i should contact mr galen for that what what's do what, is he want to just join the club yes Sorry. W5NOR.org slash membership. Ah, 
Okay. Yes. I forgot about that. Yeah. I'll just let them know that. I, sh I all that simpleness, uh, the stupidness. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I'll, I'll relay, that, relay that to him. Yeah. He's pretty, he's, he's a way higher rank than me. He's a, like a master sergeant, something, but it's good because I was also able to teach him a whole bunch of stuff about ham because he got his tech and he had no idea what the heck was going on. So the, the other one you can remember, Matt is uh, w 5 nororg slash ham. Uh -huh. And that's how to be an, how to get your amateur radio license, how to be a ham. Okay. And that's a good one to, to point newbies to, because it talks about classes and studying and video training and test sessions and um, club membership and ARRL membership and Elmer Knights and Facebook and newsletters and costs, all of that stuff in one spot. So that's W5NOR.org slash ham. Okay. I will make sure to rewire that to him. Uh, is he... the, you two can be a nerd kit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He seemed pretty interested. I, I, I've given a whole bunch of phone calls to him because he wanted to ask a whole bunch of questions. And it was, I was like, yeah, well, you should join the club because it's really nice. <laughs> Yeah, I, I keep telling them, especially with all the nets we do and all the uh, how much participation we actually have in the club, it's a buttload better. Yep. And it's just a lot, be, yeah, a lot just easier to do that. Fiddling uh, around, and they got online. We had online tests from Glarg and all kinds of crazy stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's bad. the weird thing is that the on. I remember just a year ago, online testing was non-existent. Now there's yeah. so many that just have it. I wonder if it's going to stick around after the pandemic kind of slows down. The, I'm betting the, it is. The Glarg oh, folks are saying they believe it will. Um, they've done, I think, 2,000. See, where's the session stats? 2,000 some sessions, something like that, in uh, recent history. We did one Sunday. We had 123 uh, maybe, 2, 000, maybe 2,000 candidates? No, no, no. Sessions. Uh, 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 no, no, no. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Here's their list. Session counts. Uh, I don't know. Number of sessions since April. 216. 4,200 um, examinees since April 5th is what's happened with this much glarg. I, I did another one with them third Friday, Sunday and they did 126 people, uh, 90 brand new hams, 25 upgrades. Uh, I don't know, three or four went tech general extra all in the same shot. Um, it's just amazing. Yeah. They charge 10 bucks. Most of that goes to uh, the guys at exam tools, the ham study folks for their software. Okay. Yeah, I, I've seen some online testing. I'm trying to convince my dad to uh, actually get tested again because he's still he's still yeah. at his technician, which is kind of get not, get it. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. So I, I I need to convince him to do it. I I, I might upgrade to my extra, especially since the new FCC thing yeah. is coming out. Does have Where's they came out with the have they come up with a date when that's going to finally come out? Peter. Well, if I wasn't muted, you'd know by now. Oh. Um, <laughs> it has not yet, the, the report and order has not yet been published in the Federal Register, and it will be some multiple of 30 days after that event that the fee will take place, but it hasn't been published yet, so no fees. I think, I think, I think Denny's going to be okay. I think Denny's going to be able to get his renewal in before the fee starts, so... Okay, well that's good. I'm glad that. So I, I still need to get my button gear to get extra sometime. But yeah, you've got some uh, time. You're a young guy. You're under forty. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, you're under forty. What does it Do take to become legal a VE? To get an extra? <laughs> what does it take to become a VE? Um, if, if you want to be a VE locally, or the big thing is locally, we encourage extra. Um, class fees, oh, folks. please yes and much and simpler. much because you can only do now if you're general peter help me on this you if you're general can you do can if you're a technician, technician can you do anything you can't be a ve as a technician so if you have your general 
I know that these folks, Glarg folks, are looking for um, folks because they, um, I think they did 80 new techs. So, you know, even if you're a general, you can help uh, with those guys. And here you just sign up. I mean, it's, it's really. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem with general class VEs is that they can't do general class tests or extra class tests. And, right. and that's fine. If you're running through a lot of technicians, that's great. But somebody turns around and say, okay, can I take the extra? Can I take the general now? Okay. Now you got to shuffle everybody and yeah. it but works these, in certain situations, but not all situations. Yeah. These guys, it helps because they, it'll help you. Now the side yeah. part of that is if you're a Glarg VE and you're a general and you want to test um, for extra, they do that for free. So you get oh, that's fun. Yeah, that's a cool way to do that. Yeah. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll test them for free too. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, our, as far as I know, we're still testing here. So yeah, yeah, we're still testing here. But extra, it, what we encourage here is extra. And then, uh, hey guys, can I can I help? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as a yeah, right, I didn't ask you. <laughs> You can help Glarg. You can't help here because you really. Can't I mean, show I mean, it, it, what what would the best place for be for me to? I would like to help part time when, when I can on my schedule. Right here uh, allows. You live, you live in Indianapolis. Yeah. So. Well, can you get to the fire? Glarg is in Los Angeles. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you meant come to Norman, and no, okay. I so. would love to, dude. <laughs> Um, but they're willing to buy you a beer anyway. I I heard there's an FAA thing in Oklahoma City now. I don't. Uh, is yeah, that there is, and I was actually down there it's recently, a... and I intentionally didn't touch base with a lot of people because I didn't want to get get sick or get anybody else sick. Yeah, that's a stupid. <laughs> stupid pandemic. Yeah. It's um, a, yes. Agree. Yeah. But th this summer we're going to party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The the the. For this, if you sign up for, with them to be a VE, you go through their little process, and then you'll want to move over here to become a. How do you, once you get in and you oh, get okay. the super secret password, you become a remote session VE, and okay. then you show up. And then I can tell them when I'm available and whatever. Okay. Well, you just sign up for sessions. There's a calendar. Um, oh, okay. There's a calendar, and and you can uh, uh, you RSVP. They do a lot of that over Discord. Um, so you can. Uh, well, I'm all I'm all familiar or, with Discord. Or I mean, that's my I whole job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Groups.io is another piece. Oh, I mean, not not that Discord. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, yes, that that. So that thank you, Mark. You just, you just sign up as you wish, and and um, you know the the future volume of them. They they have four VEs on a individual person, so. It eats up a lot of people. Well, that's, uh, you, you know, got to keep an eye on these folks. Yeah. And, and everybody I've run into. They're, the they're, they're, I mean, it's, you got to trust folks, but there's a lot of incentive to cheat. It's kind of cool. It, yeah. You have to pick up the camera and show the whole room. Um, I was going to say, are they still, still doing the multiple cameras or how are they? Uh, Glarg does not require multiple cameras. ARRL does. Um, Glarg may, you have to shoot a camera all the way around the room, 360 degrees underneath the table that you're at in front of the table. Um, if there's a sheet hanging there, you have to show me behind the sheet because there may be a guy in the background, you know, that sneaks out and does something. Um, <laughs> no headphones. You can't have an ear earpiece, um, cause they don't know where that earpiece is coming from. Um, the biggie, the, the new one is you have to have either a mirror or your phone in a selfie mode so you can see the, so we can see the front of the computer because they were getting people putting sticky notes on the computer front, um, front of the computer uh, screen. And, you know, uh, you know, you know I, I find that all hilarious because the technician test is not that freaking hard. Yeah, it's, you know, they're there to cheat. Yeah. So, that's the, yeah. And so you, you check the whole room and then you, uh, they share the screen and we, we watch the running tasks to see what's running um, and make sure there's nothing else there. They oh, my. Oh, my. I must, I'm off with my ethics in high gear. <laughs> yeah. Not, not that they aren't anyway, but. 
yeah, you have to uh, like we had some guys shutting down cloud sharing stuff, and uh, we had shut some of those down uh, Sunday, and um, uh, so it's just uh, it has to be Chrome, and um, you can bring up a calculator, and they have a calculator on the screen, and then you just sit and watch the eyes, and man, it's you know. You know, just like when we do it in person, two minutes in, you know what the guy's going to do. You know, if he's going to pass or fail, just watching him. <laughs> yeah, you, w- 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 whether the sweat's coming off the brow or <laughs> exactly, and uh, you get to see the screen. You can it'll share the screen on one side, and um, you can see the screen, and then you can see their their face. And um, you know, if they're just burning through questions, this one guy was burning through questions. I couldn't even get the question read, and he had the answer on already. So you know he'd been on hamstudy.org 24 hours a day for way too long. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with Don there on the post-it note thing. It's like, I get that people that people have different levels of experience and they have different methods of learning and stuff, but all of the answers are available beforehand. Yeah. Now, you can't really memorize all of them, but you can remember, remember a good uh, chunk of them. Pilot, pilot ground school is exactly the same way. And that's what it was yeah. initially modeled after. Yeah. Because there was a hue and cry at the beginning in the 80s, and they said, how can you – you can't give them the answer. Well, we do it for pilots. And everybody's yeah. like – Yeah, but oh, that's not life or death. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, and in fairness, is there is a – pilot. A, yeah. <laughs> in fairness, there is a – you know, there's a practical test long before you ever get your pilot's license. But ooh, that's loud. What um, is five again. What is form six oh five? That's funny. Uh, it's the light. It's the the FCC six oh five is the application that you used to be able to submit uh, to to get or modify a, a range of different licenses, and that actually the paper form is going away because FCC is not going to accept paper anything anymore. We print one out uh, that is a variation of the NCVEC 605, which is what most of the VECs use that collects the same information. Um, we, we don't collect any information on the 605. We generate it from our software and print it out because we have to keep paper copies of all our applications. It's the um, one you were shown when you passed the test. Yeah, you signed it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if you want one, I'd be happy to mail you a PDF of it. Um, well, I'm looking at AWRL's uh, VEC manual. Yeah, they use yeah. the NCVEC. The NCVEC is the National Conference of VECs, uh, and they, they're the ones that come up with the question pools, uh, and they also have a standard version of the 605. Because the, the 605 for the federal government, for the FCC, was long and involved because it was for, I don't know, 10 different radio services. And, you know, if, if your station was owned by foreigners, you had to fill out Schedule D and blah, 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 blah. So, so, so is there a test involved in having a VC? To, to be a VE for ARRL, they, they have an open book test. Um, it's a little bit different for LARC VEC, which is what we use. Uh, it's, you still need to read the manual, but, but if you convince me that you're not some kind of a you know, felon or something, uh, we'll get you certified. But you really do need to read our policy and procedures manual, which is not unlike ARRL. Uh, you got to read their policy thing. They just have a open. They just test. charge you a dollar page. <laughs> Fundraising up. Yeah. Yeah. Mark and I were doing the math on that just the other day, actually. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Is that online? What? Available by special request. The math? No, the math, math? was the math was no. from uh, John uh, Stratton's visit when he, and he when he was here. He said they. They picked up about four hundred and sixty thousand dollars. The uh, scars be manual. Oh, oh, for the Laurel Amateur Radio Club. Uh, go to Laurel VEC. Laurel VEC dot com. God, I, you'd think I would know that off the top of my head. Is it dot org? I think it's dot org, isn't it? 
ec.com. No, it's it'll dot redirect com. You. Yeah, it'll redirect you. And yeah. it should, do they have it there? Team leader resources. I don't think you need to. Yeah, policy and procedures manual. There it is. Yep. Yeah, you is. don't need to be logged in for that. I'll put it in the chat here. We're in. We're still in deadly global pandemic mode. So we're we're our sessions now are. Although we've got like seven people signed up for next week, uh, we've only been doing it with four. VEs. Six. The North Carolina guys out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we had a guy sign up from, from North Carolina, and it's like I can't immediately dis discard somebody. Just oh well, he's not from here. No, because we get a lot of people that come through their TDY at Tinker or their weather service or whatever, or FAA. Um, and I wrote back to him. I said, hey, we'll see you at the firehouse in Norman, Oklahoma. And he wrote back and he said, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> no sweat. But he used to live in Tuttle, he said. So, I don't know. Well, I'll try not to hold that against him. Well, I know, but uh, yeah, so. Yeah, so we're in COVID mode right now. We used to have, like, we'd get, Mark, how many VEs would we get before? Ten? Man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think 15? we ever went on to a second page on the sign-in sheet. Oh, I signed on the back once. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we've we've cut that down. We, we just do, well, we've had a couple where four. it's just been three of us, which is yeah. the minimum, the legal minimum. Uh, but we usually have four guys just to... And it's the four youngest guys, which is really scary because at 57, I think I'm the youngest. So uh, I got yeah. a quick question for anyone who's got knowledge around my area. So I was listening to the Scars Repeater the other day, and I sh shifted off frequency by maybe like uh, maybe two or one kilohertz. I think that's enough. Anyways, I was only like 147.07. Oh, I was listening. It was either a a repeater or it was some simplex which was really weird it was not the scars repeater i know that for sure oh seven five is that it peter yeah oh seven five would be a repeater frequency somewhere i don't know where it's, it's ardmore area if i remember it was, oh, was it, it was, oh. this was the frequent oh sorry i said that too because was, was, was it possibly oh four five well, yeah, because there's two. I don't yeah. think so. Oh, oh, oh four five is it used to be a real strong repeater in the Norman area. Uh, well, it was down in. Uh, it was in the middle of nowhere, but it was pretty strong in Norman. Uh, oh yeah, you could you could talk to it if you had a decent antenna outside of yeah. your house. Uh, that's the Cyril okay. machine. Thank you, Cyril. That's Thank where you. I was going with that. Yeah. Cyril, yes. Thank you, sir. But it's, I think there's it's probably one forty seven oh five oh seven five is probably what you were hitting it was just close yeah. enough that it picked it up yeah, yeah. you were, you were getting close well, that would be it. the next next reasonable step yep yeah, and that's and up. you probably heard jeff because mm -hmm. he's on that one a bunch and he's oh, got really? like eight megatons of power going that way Je which jeff uh, uh uh hair um oh sorry, sorry harrelson yeah harrelson jethro brain jethro yeah oh okay He's on that one. I've, we've somebody somebody was complaining about an issue at one point, and, and it was like, uh, uh, "That's not a problem. That's uh, that, that that's good use." I mean, the yeah. same kind of question as this. I was off frequency, and something was wrong. Nope, nothing's wrong. That that was, and we've the big thing they were hearing was the input, uh, his input coming in. Oh, oh, his, 075 his, oh, is seven. also KB five LLI in Ardmore. Yeah. Yeah, it's and I don't remember where if is that surreal or yeah. So that was probably what I was hearing then. That makes sense. Yeah. That yep. I was hitting that. Yep. yep. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's only closer to it, so you're going to get it pretty pretty good down uh, there. Right. Yeah. yeah, and and it's only you know two clicks, three clicks over from if it's a five kilohertz click on your radio, it's only three clicks over. So yeah, I was wondering because I was like, I switched one over, and I was like, who the heck are these people talking? I'm like, I know none of them. And I, I tried to almost call them out on, uh, well, I was going to try to check into one of their nets that I had, but I didn't have the correct PO tone. So now that I actually know how it works out. Uh, 123, it looks like, yep. from what I'm seeing yep. here. So I got the repeater, so I, I might have to check it on there and see what the, the human replies back. Uh, also, I, I guess I have some, ask for some suggestions. Um, 
So I'm putting a uh, homemade uh, two meter Yogi. I, if I could make it dual band, that would be awesome, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that good. Um, up in my attic, is there any suggestions to do attic installations? I've heard, I have do basically you have, do you have a metal roof. No, I have, I have a metal roof now. So I, all my yeah. attic antenna dreams are, are shot to hell. <laughs> you were the guy. I know. Yeah, I, was tell, I was telling that story that something I said somebody had a metal roof and they went, bro. Yeah, but it it's the last roof I'll ever buy on this house, right? So yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Just like it's the last car you'll ever own. In the yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> uh, that's a ground plane for something. Uh, I'd probably uh, yeah. void the warranty, I would think. So I'll let that go a few years before I do that. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying that there's a warranty with you because it's up the roof. great <laughs> the, big the ground. Tape measure, measure not no uh, yeah i thought about measure go ahead would work yeah i actually have one of those and i was thinking about putting it up there because well i guess here's a, a little hint so me and my dad also we put in a homemade weather station about in december and the reason we got one that we figured out it's connected up to a raspberry pi that we're going to be using to hopefully set up an aprs station sometime in the future Excellent and uh we have no so basically he's wanting me because i told him all right you get the weather station stuff i'll provide the raspberry pi and i will also get the radio and set up the antenna inside that we can constantly use and i basically plan to also have some sort of antenna also in the attic that's going to be constantly hooked up to the radio yeah it's gonna it's gonna be finicky because with we're gonna be using a raspberry pi and we're probably just gonna get a cheap lexan radio um i know mark mr mark has showed that a few times there's old lexan radios and uh we're gonna be uh, trying to connect the raspberry pi via like the mic cord and using the io pins to hopefully control it via like dire wolf or something like that i'm not too much into the software because i have no idea i haven't really looked too much into it i know my dad has touched it a little bit but my job is basically to come up with some sort of antenna and radio assortment okay. so well, what you what you're gonna have to worry about is you're gonna have to worry about any kind of metal in in your attic, uh, i.e., a metal roof or um, the metallic backing on the insulation that's in, on your roof, in in you know underneath your rafters, underneath the roof roof panels. Yeah. So you uh, want to make craft sure craft paper is okay, that. right? Craft paper is fine, of course, but um, a lot of them are now have foil shield and they make an excellent Faraday cage, so you'll want to you want to confirm that that's not okay. That, that your uh, insulation doesn't have that. Newer newer insulation has that. Older insulation does not. Yeah, so, that that would be very bad if that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just like having a metal roof. So, yeah. Um, well, I, I will def that's something I have not thought of, thought of, so I will definitely have to double check that before I do anything. Right. Yeah, the, the the main thing that I'm mostly just trying to figure out is just how to actually make the antenna. Because I'm making this completely homemade. What I did, there was a TV Yagi antenna that was put in horizontally in the attic. It already had a pole for the installation. So me being the cheap ham I am, I uh, cannibalized it and took the mount. And basically, I took all the, uh, the just receiving elements off of that. And then I put two wood boards on it and that's where i'm going to be attaching some like i think it's 10 gauge copper wire solid copper wire and that should I, it, it's not too flimsy enough and i'm pretty sure i checked it last time and that's what i'm going to be using as a three element yogi elements and sure I and there's, just, there's plans out there for for making a dual band yogi okay um, i mean look at the satellite guys they they do that a lot yeah. So, okay. Uh, I'll have to double check that because that yeah. is I'm trying to make a dual. But like I've made one dual band Yagi, my coat hanger one. It's just the way that it's attached for the dual for the dual elements it will not work with this one, which kind of sucks because it would be really easy to do it like that. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm thinking of this a different way, but that, that's a good point. I, I'll have to do more research. Make, on make your own tape tape measure antenna and just do it dual band. Yeah, that, do that too. That that's true. I don't, uh, that's not a bad idea. I actually I I checked the um SWR on the uh, kits that you give out, and I'm not trying to be mean, but it's not the best. <laughs> it, it, I was actually, uh, I think I think forty on well on 
40. That's great. Yeah, it's going to work on 40 meters. Yeah, it's going to be real high on 40. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on, I think on 70 centimeters, it was really good. I don't think it was good. I can check it right now. I can pull it out real second and do it. I might actually want to do that. Here, let me go check. I want to go grab it and actually see it. There you go. Hey, Mark, you sent me a couple links to yeah, me. Yeah, I put Did them to everybody mean... else. <laughs> okay. Do you mean to send them? No. No, I appreciate I that. <laughs> I pushed them out to everybody. Thank you. I was like, why did they go to him? Oh, yeah. My battery died. You... Peter, did I miss anything else on the VE stuff? <laughs> Batteries. <laughs> Gotta love them. Okay. Um, no, what I was saying is we're in COVID mode where we have a very restricted number of VEs. We used to have a little bit more of a party atmosphere at, at test sessions, but we've cut down on the number of VEs. So we're, we are not actively soliciting VEs at this time. That doesn't mean you shouldn't uh, study our thing. And, you know, I can put you in for one, but I'm not going to invite you to a test session just because of the stupid COVID thing. Uh, but we'll just be on social board. Extra that this section to the next one. Say that. Say that again. I'm hoping to be ready for my extra license, not this test, but the following one. Awesome. Okay. Concentrate on that first. Get get the amateur extra out of the way. I'm Come and see us for it. that, and then we'll talk about the VE stuff. And while I have your attention, what are those scanners on your screen? Is that an app, or is that just to look pretty? That's uh, <laughs> that is uh, what is that program? ProScan. I've got one connected to my 996P2 and another one connected to my 780XLT. No, that's real. That's that's live. Cool. That's what his scanners are scanning right now. Yeah. I, assuming my. Are you picking are up anything? Are those P25 or? Yeah, the the 996P2 is. Um, you know, now that you mention it, I think I have the volume down. That's probably why I'm not hearing anything. I saw it scanning, but I didn't know if that was just something that. No, it's scanning. Look pretty. It's scanning. I'm trying. I've been trying to map out the new Norman's newish Norman system and figure out what I'm missing. But, um, yeah, no, that's real. You're missing the encoding key. No, they're not. They're not encrypted. On, oh, they're for not. The most part, for the most part, it's Norman. You're not missing anything. <laughs> wow! That's Ooh. And another Ooh. one comes Ooh. from Ooh. 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 No, 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 no. There are there are MSTAT runs every few minutes. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. I can't. I, my office is just south of the of the uh, uh, healthplex and. Man, I see I see more red and blue lights than I ever want to see going by. No. Man, been... You won't be up there on your bike? No. <laughs> Speaking of radio stuff, I actually heard WWV today on 25 megahertz. 25? I've been trying to hear them on 25 for quite some time. Didn't think they were even still on 25 not if you go to their website they're not but they are they've been on experimentally for but it's ah. close to 10 years now um because it used to be regular in fact i can remember when they used to id the 25 you know they 2.55 10 15 20 and 25 megahertz well they haven't said that in 40 years um but yeah i actually listened to 25 megahertz today. i did i caught them on 10 and 15 today if that counts yeah. Did you hear, were you able to hear WWVH? Because I was, I was only getting oh, no. WWVH on 15 today. So Bare, b Barely getting WWV with the local noise here. Man. Hey, Peter. Yes. Speaking of listening and scanning, you'll hear some changes in MSTAT, uh, Moore's dispatch, uh, probably starting Monday. Oh. The, uh, they're not going they to do it are, through whoever they were doing it through? They are not going to do it anymore through LifeNet, and more is taking over their dispatch. Okay. Assuming we can get the signaling to work, the tone alerting to work. Hmm. Yeah, why they insist on the 
using audio tones is beyond me on a digital radio system. But, you know, what do I know? So, yeah, I we've been, it's always been that way. Well, we're still doing two-tone alerting for our fire stations. And we were told that it would be difficult uh, to make that work reliably when we went digital. And three of the stations work fine, and the fourth station just absolutely won't. But then, of course, they also found the decoder had been fried, so. Uh, that's never helped. That typically doesn't help. Nope. Nope. So, yeah, you'll, you'll start. I think they're going to dispatch them all off our fire frequency, so you may not hear any. Very much oh, on MSTAT, what two, one or two or whatever they're whatever it was they've yeah. been using. That is okay. Is that still all MSTAT Norman Moore combined responses? Yep. Is that uh, well? Yeah, it's just, they're supposed to be separate, but they're not separate. They run it as one thing, and well, dispatching wise, they are. They yes, they certainly are. This um, Norman dispatches the Norman units, and as of Monday, we'll be dispatching the more units. Yeah. Is it physically the fire department dispatchers doing that, or what are they doing? There are no fire department dispatchers. It's all combined. It's all combined? Okay. Police and fire on our end, and soon to be EMS and uh, police, fire, and EMS at Norman. Hmm. Odd. Odd. And as, as long as we're talking about changes in about two weeks um, on structure fires and more, you will hear us. Uh, well, you won't hear us, but uh, we'll also be getting automatic aid from either Norman and or Oklahoma City, depending on where the fire is at. And on the fires, structure fires in Norman that are within a couple of miles of our borders, we'll automatically be sending to go with them and, and automatically with Oklahoma City on with that. Earth engine? Yep. Extra engine. And from on our end, we'll be getting, I think, aerial apparatus on ours. Mm. That's crazy talk. Well, <laughs> If you know anything about fire service, the it's all quote voluntary, but it's all tied to insurance, right? Of, uh, yeah. Of, um, Norman got class one ISO class one. I can't believe that. They did. Are their hoses? Yeah. In their tank? It's almost impossible to do that. Are they on a split? They have to be split. There's no. I way don't, I don't know out. the details to, and the. The transcript yeah. would never go into that level of detail because they they don't know they have to. But um, well, anyway, it's got to be split. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, yeah but, the uh, the requirements for the number of apparatus and the number of people on a scene is just crazy. You know, it's like well, thirty or forty people, and you know that's you know that's it's not. The ISO ratings are not done by the insurance services office anymore. They're done by ISO Inc. They spun well, it off. Either way, and I can't help but think that maybe if you just pay the right fee, you can get your class one. I'm not saying they didn't do anything to get it. I'm just thinking that perhaps yeah, the I, I don't it. think so because we're in the we've got part of an ISO audit coming up here shortly, and it's all water system, and they're wanting to oh, know stuff about the generators, and and it's crazy. Some of the stuff, you know, we're like, well, what does this mean? Water flow and response time, and yeah, and, the, and it, as well it should be because the response times in Norman are publicly they are an average of three minutes, but in reality, again, that has to be split. There's no way they're getting three minutes out of east. Right, yeah. right. Since we hear three minutes of loud siren for <laughs> coming down, coming down eighty fourth, <laughs> coming down eighty fourth. Making the turn on a nine and then going towards Peter's house. Yep. And we can hear three minutes just going up. They were, there was something over the weekend, Peter. Did you hear a lot of them going by Sunday? I don't hear them that much out on the highway. That's, oh. that's two and a half miles away. So, Galen, do you know if there's been any change? Miles. Galen, do you know if there's been any change to the unincorporated land? 
that is around Norman as far as response, fire response? Depends, I think, on where it's at. If it's between Norman and us, uh, Oklahoma City is, has, has taken that. I Don't ask me how it works, but um, but again, if it's a fire, they'll be calling for both of us anyway. Um, I know that uh, this has been a long time ago, but we had a fire out at Sunny Lane Estates Trailer Park there just south of my city limits on Sunny Lane and, and just north of Indian Hills. And, you know, Oklahoma City took the call. They started, called us and Norman and all three of us showed up on it. Yeah, it's weird. Also, by the way, I did get the uh, antenna out, and I have I connected it to my computer. Um, Does that via work? Nano VNA. Huh? Oh, <laughs> Nano VNA. Okay, I was gonna say if you just yes. plug it into USB, it might not do anything. I'm just oh, saying. No, 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 no. That's how the new. No, Nano works. VNA. No, that's cool. Yeah. So if you guys want to see it, I can screen share real quick if you wanted to. Does it now? So do you have it set up to show the resonance points on the? Because that's a TV antenna. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do. Um, yeah, I have it set right now here. Uh, Mr. Mark, could I try sharing my screen? If you you're there, baby. Green okay. Button on the bottom. Sorry, this is on my laptop, so it sounds a little worse, but let me try sharing this real oh. oh, he's a two camera oh, guy. Look at that. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. I can't let me share. Let me get you on the other one. Hold the on. The one without the call sign. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> This, this let the get <laughs> okay. It's 2021, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, there we go. Um, so, where's he going? Now I get it. There you go. There you go. There you go. Should be able to see that. So, I, I have that. This is spectrum analyzer that shows where the dips are. And I have this from 100 megahertz to 500 right now. And uh, I have these two points set up in the two main amateur bands i can just wow. and so anyways this is that that's pretty cool that uh so it fit it, it does dip down i guess you're right you are right look at that now the swr is right here um now you can look. wait wait, wait. that's kind of like looking holy cow at an eye chart from a mile away yeah yeah no it dips I, I was surprised to see that you said that the 440 was actually in there yeah uh, because I I've never really tested it on 440. You know, now this is. Do you know what era this TV? Oh, it's a. I a, thought it was a TV antenna. I'm no, sorry. no, this is a tape measure. Tape measure, gotcha. Tape measure. Because yeah. I was surprised to see how well it worked on <laughs> band bands. No, if no, it was no, a TV no. antenna. It's no, not a TV. No, no. I get it. Okay, I'm good now. Uh, so this is the uh, yeah, that's the Yogi antenna that I got a while back. I I I checked it out and I noticed that it is it's pretty. Finicky, mostly because I'm holding it. That doesn't. Yeah, yeah. And you're going near. You're going near the uh, walls. Yeah, you're in. And, you're in a room, yeah. and yeah. You got to be That's... in clear space, Matt. You got to go out like thirty thousand feet, stand up there, and then hold it way above your head, and then then you'll get it perfect. But, but yeah, wait, that's... wait till the thunderstorm is right over you, though. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I'll make sure to go, especially one of most severe thunderstorms, and I'm just going to stand up like this. The just, time. Yeah, just straight up, straight up. Yeah, actually. The picture, the the guy that's holding the the antenna in the picture, our good buddy uh, Victor, um, he has one of these mounted um, in his attic, and whenever really? the storms come, he switches over to that, and yes. that way he can he can do anything um, off of it, um, and uh, and not blow himself to pieces. And that was the smartest ten dollar thing I think I've ever seen anybody do is just stick one in the attic and point it towards your repeater and yeah i've thought of doing that because the ends of my roof are not metal they are they're wood like oh you got a spec hip right roof there. yeah so i've been thinking of and and one of the ends roughly points at our uh repeaters so there you i can be convinced to do exactly what he's thinking of doing but you're two miles from the repeater you can get it on a wet noodle can't you depends how wet and yeah. what type i mean if it's al dente uh... <laughs> i can have my radio off and pick up the repeater um picking it up is not a problem having it picked and up is a different and thing. uh 
Sam put a note in here that says he loves him his tram 1480. Somebody was commenting about uh, 1480. Oh, really? Above that, yeah. No, was me. I was just curious oh, about it. It's a very inexpensive dual band antenna. I was considering buying one. Oh, oh, I see. I wasn't watching that. Okay. I wasn't watching either. Thank, 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 thank. Um, yeah, I've got one. And I've, I've got a, I've got a tripod that I bought like for fifteen dollars. It's made to hold like a speaker, and uh, I set it oh. out on my deck and <laughs> with the, the tram on it. It's really nice. Works fine. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, works great. Yeah, that's a tram. Set, I've, I've never seen anything wrong with tram, but go ahead, Peter. Well, so tram. So set your way back machines to like 1975. <laughs> what was tram doing back then? It seems like they were like a big CB supplier, but I don't remember what. Yes. And no, then they then they disappeared. Tram and low end commercial. And then they just yeah. disappeared for like 30 years. Mm -hmm. And in the last 10, all of a sudden, <laughs> they seem to have bought a bunch of product lines from people and they, they're, they seem they're to out of bed, man. They, yeah, they're out, out of Edmund, Edmund, I think. Yeah. Well, I didn't I realize they, that. Uh, yeah. I thought that they did CB antennas in the 70s, but then went commercial. They were, that could they were be. I don't know. Strictly commercial, commercial antennas and commercial military antenna, and then uh, then got back okay. into the game again. Huh? They do There's, a lot of marine uh, marine band stuff. Uh, yeah. Really. <laughs> Country of origin: right. Taiwan, China. They did oh, a yeah, lot of marine else. stuff too. Yep. I want to know what radio you're using, Don, to uh, pick up 4,400. Yeah, so <laughs> a little, little uh, dyslexic on the zero there, dude. Oh, yeah, bouncy. we didn't read it carefully. A little bouncy. I, mean, I actually probably have a radio that'll pick up 4,400, but let's not go there. That's why I'm I happy. asked. Yeah. All right, I'm going to bail out of here because i got to go to work in the morning. Yeah, I need to get going myself. Good on yeah, you, me man. too. Good if it you. snows, I got to get up and take my wife to work at six. So, oh hey guys. Okay. All right. Later. See you later. Thanks. Later. Thanks. Be Bye. careful, guys. No. See ya. Yeah, that's a good little looking little antenna. That it is. That it is. Well, is anybody left that has played with the FCC? Email requirement in the registration. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's in cores now. Uh, I I don't know what your question. I've well, I mean, I've gone to cores. When I when I went I went in earlier. Somebody we were talking in the past meeting about the requirement to have everything paperless. I mean, yeah, paperless and all email. And three years ago, would I have filled that out when I got my FRN? Yeah. So they would have got my email then? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to get back in and verify that. I actually got in one other time and was oh. able to look at my my profile and did not have any email on it, or nor did it have uh, any way to put it in. But I was not signed into cores. That's where you have to be is cores. Then I tried to create a cores account. I tried to sign in thinking maybe it used the same credentials. It doesn't apparently. No. And so I tried to register. And we got in an argument over the password. And, yes. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with it at this point. I've met the password requirements and it, it wouldn't. Uh, I didn't like it. I don't know if I'm not random enough. Or I may get very specific, like talking to Google Assistant. Uh, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm just curious if anybody else had gone back and added their email to the to the uh, registration information at the uh, the three letter cuss word. Um. I have ah, no, stumped, stumped, stumped them. Okay. We have, All we right. have, uh, we've gone through the thing is, I did this, this the other day with somebody. Um, 
because this is my old address and that was 15 years ago, last updated in 2013. This must be the old um, course. <coughs> Let's go make sure we have the right course. We finally got it. Well, I got it inside of the FCC uh, ULS. That's probably a good way to get it. And, and you're not getting logged in or you are getting logged in? Not at this point. Okay, I'm under licensing now. Licensing and databases, I would think that would be the portal to get back into my, my information. Updated. Oh, there's the updated version of cores. That's where it's at. This is the new one. Let me put this in the chat. Okay, send already. There you go. So that's the new one in there. And this is a different layout. So it's going to be the different login. Okay. So they're going to, uh, okay. Oops. Come back. Come back. Yeah, because this uses this doesn't use your FRN. This uses my uh, in my case it uses uh, email address. But don't you have to link that information somehow? Um, I have in the past, and this is the the concept is it's going to be where they do the the pay stuff. Um, so in this case, I want to manage my existing FRN. Mm -hmm. And you can you can add one to it. So there's mine. Okay. Let's see if they have the financial. This FRN financial piece is it says green light, which means I don't owe any money. And then you can click on this to view or make any payments, and which I haven't made any payments. So in the future, that's what that's going to grab your money. Okay. But I don't know. Now, to answer your question is, is specifically is I want to uh, make sure my email is correct. And still got the wrong address. Yeah, but it wasn't. Last update, it was November of 2013, Mark. Yep. You need to update yep. yours. Yep. We'll go ahead and do it now. Um, okay. Well, that should log me into the older, well, maybe. Well, that's the oh. older one. Oh, but see, I never had a username that I recall. I didn't you write need it. To Okay, email is required. There's your answer. Where the heck is the email? It says it's yeah. required. Do, 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 do. Oh man, you just about you just saved my butt. There we go. Emails on the bottom right. So my email is uh, Hang on. Klein this. At com. Okay. Uh oh, now where am I? Ah. So that's my FRN. And I have updated my email. So yes, to answer your question, yes, I have done that. <laughs> I didn't realize it. Yes, you don't know. Have, no, yes, I just updated mine right now. Oh, okay. I mean, so yes, it. I, I was there, and I didn't realize I didn't have one. So you just saved me big time troubles. Well, you got in through, and I got in through either one of them. FCC registration. Uh, yes, either one works out well. They ended up at the same spot with that wrong. In my case, it was a wrong address. Hmm. Um, now you got me wanting to think about going out there and checking mine. <laughs> well, everybody's wrong. I mean, this is one of those classic cases where they yeah, change the rules and everybody who's in there is wrong. Yeah, this is a newsletter topic. I would assume that, that mine was in there. Um, so you you can go out to that from what? Scars page, Mark? Uh, it's on the screen. It's in the chat. Okay. Night, Lindell. He didn't leave. Yeah, he left. If you go there, 
if you go to the new cores page, you use a username. If you go to the old, um, you use your FRN. FRN. You use your FRN, right? Right. Oh, you just gave me a newsletter article, big time. And this is, I would have got this. I would have got this wrong on the test. I just said I was good because okay. That's the cores. Now, where is my? Okay, I, th I found a page where they're addressing that, so I should be able to. Okay. But the big key, the big key is the money is this part, the financial one. And then you want to administer and you click on the, the user options update view FRN. But if I you guess, don't remember your FRN? Uh, you can get it from, uh, you can search for it or you can go to QRZ. And, uh, if you look yourself up on QRZ. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, I forgot. And uh, man, you got a, this is a newsletter article right here. Uh, and there really should be, you know, I mean, we got very well paid people with these, building these sites. If you're a registered FRN licensed individual, they should have a simple little app, FRN number, add email, bang. Yeah. And be done. Yeah. What? Uh, anyway, I know better. It's a stupid question. I don't see so it, Mark. I, I was about to ask a really um, stupid question. You you click on the thing that says views. If you look oh, at my yeah, screen, yeah, view, yeah. View, yeah. view Uncle Charlie. And it should take you there. Okay. This one is see, and there's the radio off. Is that a different FRN? That's from the ULS is where if you go in that way. Now, does this have an email address associated with it? Mine did not. But I don't even see a slot here. It's got to be in the FCC. It's got to be in the, uh, cores. the cores, not the ULS. Right. But if you never went into cores before. Yeah. It's all your stuff current on that one, Mark? Yep. Okay. Now, is that the same... U L or F F R N F R N over here is where the hell is it? Five two four two. Five two four two. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same F R N. So there's two different places now. It's the cores side that it has to have the uh, the information. Oh, wait, admin maybe have it. Maybe it's in here too. Admin. Nope, that just lists what happened. Man, good question. Good golly. Yep. Good good newsletter article, Mark. Yep. I'll check your spelling next week. Well, I'll <laughs> I don't know if I'll do it next week, but I'll uh, when I do it, I'll send it to you and let you double check it because that's going to be wacky, dude. Yeah, that's going to be wacky, dude. Oh, I can't see this hornet's nest you stirred up. Yeah, see, two thousand trying to stay legal, right? Yeah. 2002 is when I I had to go put mine in. Um, I put my taxpayer identification number in. So, so that's when I probably started on cores. Wacky, man. Oh, by the way, Mark, uh, 
kind of off the subject of side story today. It was on one of my nets yep. uh, on the uh, link, um, Echo Link today. Yep. And uh, one of the contacts that called in was on uh, generator power because he was in Birmingham, Alabama. And he said his neighbors just to the north of him in uh, Fultondale that mm -hmm. had the tornado last night. Oh, yeah. Uh, he said Fultondale is basically flat. Has a population of about 9,000. Uh, they had less than three-minute warning. And I remember today hearing about one family, one husband, wife, and child that said that they managed to get out from their den, got in the hall, and dove into the bathtub and their house come apart. Mm. That's how fast it hit. When they got the warning, <laughs> it was already there. Mm. Said today that it was registered as an EF EF2. Oh, Wow. Yeah. But they had less than three minute warning. That's kind of scary. I'm going to have to start using some special registration language, so I'm going to mute my mic. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you start turning red, we won't uh, call the police. <laughs> well, I can, I'm still laughing, but. <clears throat> Well, when I got the passwords, it wanted 12 or 12 or more characters oh, yeah. Yeah. with one lowercase letter, one uppercase letter, one number, one punctuation mark. Oh, I didn't add the special character. Uh -huh. That's what it was. You didn't but that only gives me five. What do I do with the other nine? FCC sucks. I know it's amazing, isn't it? No, no, no. Use those words, those letters. I, I, actually, I use some. I my Microsoft is even better than that. My Microsoft <laughs> login. I have, I have seen a bunch of those. No, okay. Mark, Mark, how that uh, 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 Alabama tornado. They had one teenager that died, which was sad. Uh, he was actually in his parents' basement with his family. And he was killed in his basement. And there was about 20 others that was actually injured. Yeah, I was watching that storm yesterday go that direction. And um... Well, they said it, they, they thought it was an EF2, but it could have been a... I think that the, the pictures I saw, it could have been easily an EF3. Uh, no, that's a, that's an art, but yep. There was one <clears throat> that they, they showed a side-by-side -side picture of what, the, what was set in there, and then what you saw was basically ground with a little rubble. Yep. But yeah, they had they did they their emergency warning system. I would be a little curious about that. I mean, like I said, I know it was at night. It was about eleven thirty, eleven forty-five when it hit. But they said they had less than three minutes warning. At least he, that's what he was saying. They had less than three minute warning. He said he actually heard those sirens go off from where he lives there. Take. Uh, there's Mr. Skaggs. Uh, he's been quiet. You got anything good for us? You were working on an antenna last. You sent me a message, weren't you? Uh, Unmute yourself and say hi. Unmute. 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 Your little mute button's still on. Who? No, his mute button's off, but he's not saying anything. <laughs> Who <does? laughs> I know Bert my hair is not that bad. <laughs> uh, 
Slap the computer around a little bit there. And it's those apples. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not. Maybe that's why we haven't heard him. That's good. Who, who are you trying to raise? Gary. Uh. Skaggs. No, we're not going to talk to you until you get it all figured out. It might be safer. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> now, now I'm on the robot. You're, I'm not a robot thing. And they give you these click the pictures, but they're all tiny little icons, and I don't even know what's in half of them. I can't see them. Well, so that, I, keep, that, I just that keep was, picking things until it lets it go. That was designed for people, you know, uh, oh, 15 to 25. I'm in. Hey, hey, all right. There you go. Not the words I'd expected to hear out of him right now, but good. <laughs> uh, okay, now I got to go to my email and verify it. Okay. Maybe closer. I may have accomplished something today. I'm so proud of you. The uh, the bad thing is if you drive a if you drive a uh, commercial truck, you have to do the same thing for a different account system where you have to log in and do all of this stuff. So we're trying to get our guys how to figure out how to get an account, log themselves in. Second, you have to have a, a cell phone or an email address and you have to verify by text or by cell phone. And then once you get in there, you have to connect it to a company just like they're doing with this stuff. Oh my goodness. It's just crazy. For a CDL. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that go to, uh, to Alaska because they can go up there, they can fly an airplane, they can drive and it, it, there's nothing there to mess with them. But half the pilots up there don't have a license. I they got a bush that. plane. They got a bush plane and a, and a strip of land somewhere. Well, I might be exaggerating, but not totally. Hey, Mark, what what uh, all your guys have to go through the classes over CDL, right? Um, do not have to go to classes yet. They're working on adding a class thing, but they but have they, not. They yet. get their CDL license before they do the class. Um, they don't have to take a class. All you have to do is pass the test. Oh. It's like what Wayne says doing the, the uh, VE stuff. Studying is not required. It does help when you go take the test, but it's not required. For the CDL? No, for the VE test. Oh. What about the CDL? <laughs> studying is not required. As long as you can pass the test, you're okay. What would you get to, where would you get what would you get to study? Where'd he go? We lost him. All of a sudden, I came up as host. Oh, that's well, scary. I know. I've been there. I'll just say that that's a fair question. I know I, uh, Back when I was an advanced, I tested for VE, for ARRL VE, mm -hmm. and uh, got certified, but I never actually did anything with it. So for whatever that's worth. Sure, so I would imagine uh, I can probably figure it out. <laughs> I'll have to see where I need to go to do that. Well, now I'm back. There you are, Mark. Now you're host again. Because yeah. you left it to me when you dropped out. Well, it it just came up and said, I, I don't know what's going on, and it disappeared. But Gary's unmuted. Yeah, but he hasn't said anything yet. He hadn't figured out what... You're unmuted now. You can. He said he has Zoom. no sound. Yeah. This is the best I've ever had with Gary. Do do, <laughs> sign, do, do some sign language there, Gary. <laughs> use just remember to use all your fingers. Yeah, I think he said we're number one. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
<laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I got pulled my one of my little radios. I got mobile radios here. Put in my truck. There you go. I don't have one in my truck right, right now. There you go. I brought it. Uh, brought the one I had the. Six thirty-five in to use in here. I need another mo little rig. Man, you'll see you'll see Gary smile at this one. Man, if we could only done this uh, no talk thing with David Metters, we'd all been living up better, wouldn't we? <laughs> 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 Gary, you need to unplug your microphone, plug it back in, see if it resets. That sometimes helps. I don't know. Uh, Don's the only Don and Gary would be the only two. Does anybody remember the name Paul Kelly N five N? What was it? N N. Oh, hang on. N N five G. Don, yeah, do you remember that, that name? That sounds familiar. Paul Kelly. Yeah. He's a mm -hmm. silent key. I don't know if that. Don't, really? Somebody asked. Yeah. It must yeah. have been recent. Yeah, this is just tonight. Is, do you know him? I, I, I remember the call. NN5G. I remember the call. There he is. Now he won't say anything just out of spite. <laughs> oh, no, nothing. <laughs> Do a test. C click the bottom left. Do a, a mic test or an audio test. And while you're listening, do you remember the name Paul Kelly? And N five G November November five Gulf. Okay, me neither. Well, you can mute it and unmute it. Do an audio test uh, there in the bottom left hand set. Do an audio test so you can see the if it, right there in the bottom left. Uh, uh, there's a little there's a little arrow to the right where you can go up and you can do a it says test speaker and microphone down towards the bottom of that screen. See it? If you go just the right of the mute button, there's a little up arrow. Click on it, and then when you look down that selection, down there you'll see a select, uh, down there it says test speaker and microphone. And you went away, Mark, but you're back. Yeah, I accidentally moved my mouse too fast across there and clicked the video. Oh. <laughs> uh, operator error. Got it. So is that is that uh, uh, realistic radio a good uh, doorstop now? I haven't. I, I didn't plug it in. I didn't have power. Didn't have a twelve volt power supply big enough to do it at work. So, uh oh, so bring, <laughs> bring a battery in. Oh, bring a battery. oops. Yeah. Oops. Have to bring a battery. I, I, you know, I did that on my uh, six thirty five. You're not gonna believe this. You know the little Radio Shack uh, three amp power supplies. Remember those? Yeah. Uh -huh. I hooked up my uh, Alenco. Have six one. <sighs> Yeah, I hooked up my Linko 635 and it won't, do, won't work with it. <laughs> I wonder why. I, I just, you know, wasn't sure that, but I thought, gee, it pulls a little bit more amperage than that 3 amp fire supply. Yep. Cause Usually I, you I, learn about the smoke at that time. No, no. it'll You can key up on the frequency, but you hear nothing back and it oh. doesn't transmit either. Huh. So no. I got... 
So I got to put it on a little bit bigger power supply in here. Yeah, if I uh, try to do anything over about five watts on mine, it, it'll. It, I've got one of the ones with the circuit breakers on it. It'll just trip the breaker. <laughs> well, it never tripped this one. This three amp power supply, it never tripped it. But I was thinking it was only doing on a, a, a Linko six thirty five. I was thinking high was only five watts, but might be more than that. Might be twenty five watts. I don't remember what it is. But I, I quickly figured out, guess what? It doesn't work. Yeah, that's not a good thing. Mm. Fortunately, I have another a bigger power supply. I just got to hook it up to it. Yeah. I don't really need a power supply at work, but apparently that would be a good thing to have. Wouldn't hurt. That's right. You should, you should have let me know, Mark. I got a. I would have brought you an RS twenty. <laughs> I've got all. We got a whole bunch. I'm sure you have a million at the house. We got well. All the club. I've got all the club stuff here, and oh my gosh, we got power supplies donated <laughs> to us. Oh man, how many did we go through, Mark? Fifteen or twenty? At least. Oh, oh well, never mind. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I've, I I love my RS twenty. That or my. Uh, what, whatever happened to all those computers? I got them all. All of all that. I love it all because I, I thought, what's his name? It was always working on the computers. I can't Vince. think. Huh? Vince. Yeah. Yep. What whatever happened to Mr. Vince? I haven't heard hide he's, or hair. Of he's still rocking and rolling. He's doing his lawyer stuff, hiding out like the rest of us. I was supposed to move your monitor off of you. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I I got five of them sitting out here for you, and and we never did that, did we? So did oh, he ever? I'll be back. Okay. Did he ever get? Did he ever get all of them updated to Linux? Oh yeah, yeah. They're all there's like eight or nine of them. I'm redoing my shop right now, and and I've inherited a whole buttload of monitors. So I, I'm going to set them out there on a big shelf and just have eight or nine of them running. Um, just because I can. <laughs> How oh, many, well. we, we, we never got any laptops out of that, did we? Um, we got, I think, two or three that worked. Um, what were we missing? What wireless? What the, it might have been. It might have been the wireless. We had, but we had one of them working well. I know that. Was and it with we, the Linux on it? Yeah, that's and cool. We, we had to get the right power supply because we had the wrong power supply. And, and um, Vince almost burned the thing up. It was like a, a 60 watt power supply and it needed a 90 or 120. And Oops. it was just, it was like a toaster. One of us stuck our hand down there and hit the power supply and went, yikes. I got, I got a question for you on computers. Okay. Uh, I've got a, well, let me look here. Hold on a second. Uh, I've got a, uh, Panasonic Toughbook. Remember those? Yep. Those are good. Those are good little computers. Yes, they are. But the problem I've got is the power supply. Apparently, the plug in the power in the in the laptop itself messed up, or it's not wasn't working. So they wired it direct with the power supply. I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there any way to fix it so you can go back to just plugging in and unplugging a power supply? Yeah, you can go put it, build a whole connector in, but obviously whoever did it thought that was more work than they wanted to do. How would you build a connector in there? I, as far as I understand, it's built onto the motherboard. You take the you motherboard have to open it up. You'd have to open it up and, and see and see if you can get another a replacement connector and solder it back in. Because I've had a laptop like that too. Yeah, I typically just leave the connector hanging out the side and plug it in that way. Is what I. Well, the one the connector on it, just two wires. Yeah, just wired... put a connector on those two wires then. Oh, okay. Is what I've always done. Where, where would you? That'd where be would quick you, and dirty. Where would you get the connector though? Oh, a Google. car auto shop. You could use a like a Molex connector. Doesn't matter, you know. 
as long as it matches whatever you're going to plug it into, it doesn't matter. You, you can put data pole, Allen data poles on it. Yeah. 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 Um, well, it works. It works with the power supply. I mean, you know, when you plug it in the wall and yeah, just put battery, another battery may be long gone too, though. No, no, uh, no. It was just that the 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 pin on the inside of it apparently yeah. went bad, and that's how it was fit, rewired. Yeah, there's a lot of those that did that in the in the day. A lot yeah, of them. I've got one. I've got one in a closet. Did you wire direct that way? No, uh, I just. I actually have the plug to put on it, but I've just never got around to doing it. <laughs> Usually what happens by the time you get the plug, then the computer is not worth the darn anymore. Yeah, it's, it's obsolete anyway. So, in fact, I got two of them that are that are very obsolete. It would be interesting to look at a ultra Linux light on them or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to say but, that if if you decide you don't don't want to mess with them, I'll take them off your hands. Ah. Well, I uh, they're fun to part out too. All kinds of cool things in there. I may be switching to CB because my uh, FRN project has crashed. Uh oh. <laughs> well, I got bail money. We're all right. After, after they come and get me, I'll just, be, I, I don't know. They'll, I'll look at it again in the morning. I actually succeeded in linking the FRN to something, but I'm not sure what now. <laughs> you now own a radio station it's, in it's, South it's, Dakota. <laughs> I was just going to say, if uh, Moscow contacts you, let us know. <laughs> oh, uh, I got to love them. <laughs> got to love it. <clears throat> hey, Mark, do you know that uh, uh, Windows... Uh, what was it called? Windows tool for Win for Windows 10? The media tool? Media was, creation tool, yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you can't you can't download you can download it, but you can't put it on a memory stick. Yeah, you can. No, you can't. Because it tells you some of the parts don't come transfer over with it. Oh no, no, you they're in the software. When you download it, you tell it to to stick it to the memory stick. And it'll do, it'll do that all at once. When you download it? Yep. It'll say, do you want to go to a file, an ISO, or do you want to make a memory stick? And it'll it'll uh, do it right there. I'll have to go I've back in. Thousands, I'll, thousands have to go, I'll have to go back in and, and, and try to download it again and tell it memory stick this time. Yeah. Because I don't remember seeing that it made that offer. Yep. Okay. Anxious. I need to do that so I can update a laptop. Yep. That'll work it. But that's just to make a, 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 a ISO bootable. A, a boot flop, a boot, a boot, uh, uh, not floppy. Thumb <laughs> drive. Boot. Yeah, flash drive. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it works. All right. I'll go back in and look at it. Because I downloaded it to a computer and I thought, okay, now I can just transfer that file over to. Uh, memory stick wouldn't do that. Yeehaw! Yeehaw is right. I'm trying to figure out FL Digi. I've got audio pumping to it, but how do I tell it to start listening to decode CW? Uh. Oh my, Stereo Gary. You haven't got anything on your uh, <laughs> waterfall. Yeah, I know it. That's why. So that might be a thing to do first. If, if your audio, yeah, I'm just feeding the correct codec is. Hmm. Oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. That try the yeah. That. I bet I bet oh. that works a little better. And try that. Not much better. <laughs> well, 
Well, Gary, is this one talking or no? I think it's talking. <laughs> oh, my hey, goodness. Hey, we can hear him now. So much better. Did you have anything, anything to say or was that just an exercise? <laughs> it was an exercise, apparently. <laughs> what? How come you don't have any audio coming out of that thing? I, I don't know. I, I have dropped my Chromebook once or twice. Oh. What's the Chromebook? Okay. Yeah. Well, Ed, Ed I mean, said he's got a problem with his, with his it's red a four, It's a four-year-old Chromebook, and I beat it up, unfortunately. But uh, it, you know, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking, except uh, apparently the microphone's broken now. He was having problems with his Raspberry Pi implementation because it could not pick up the audio and the um, video from the same device. He had a uh, 920 Logitech, and okay. he finally had to add a blue a blue Yeti microphone to it, and that way he got video and audio from two separate sources. And apparently, that's a known bug. Huh. Apparently. Well, I'm trying to figure out how I can see all of you on my iPad, and I haven't figured it out yet. Um, top right should be a thing that says view. No. Okay. I'm Top not. right, I've got live, custom live premium service. Okay, that's on the left on mine. Because what you're, I don't know, press and hold, tap the screen. I don't know how the iPad works. Uh, make it full, make it uh, non full screen. See if it, maybe it's above the screen itself. That happens sometimes. I'm, I'm using Zoom. Yeah, I don't know how I don't know how iPad works. I don't know. No idea. I know. Okay, <clears throat> Here, here's what you get a kick out of. Right click the taskbar and then tell me what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It ain't gonna work. I'm out. I'm out. Sound card, right channel. Hey, Gary, uh, on that Chromebook, did you ever have much problems with coming up with a program that you wanted to run on it? Not Anything? Really. No, not really, because um, if, if there's an Android application for it, uh, you can run it as an extension on the Chromebook. Wow. Yeah. And, and I've got a bunch of Android applications running on the thing. They work great. I guess I'm so used to Windows. I, uh, if I wanted to download a program, I guess I'd have to decide whether or not it actually had an app for it or if it's just a program. Yeah. That's well, the problem. No, no it, the, it, it's really pretty simple. If there's an Android app for it, you know, if, you, if you've got a particular the extension that will allow those things it'll it'll run on it as this, as if it were running uh on an android tablet yeah yeah worked works great no complaints i've used this one for you know four years plus the only problem is the only problem is if you got something like a specific hardware base like a, a programming for your radio that kind of thing yeah exactly exactly did you buy the Chromebook because of the price? It was fairly cheap or it just you wanted to try a Chromebook? Uh, what I wanted was a browser. When I, when I retired, I lost access to my really nice MacBook Pro. So uh, I, I, I really wanted something that I could just throw in a backpack and carry with me. And uh, the Chromebook uh, met it and the price was right. Uh, I've always lived in the Windows and Mac world, um, and so it, it it was no big deal to go from one to the other. And really, the Chromebook is a lot more Windows than anything else. Hmm. Okay. I know yeah, you, sure. Mark. I know you, Mark. You like all those those HP laptops. Yeah, we've got a bunch of those. They work out really well. No fans, no hard drives. I'm tickled with those. Um, well, you got me to 
got uh, by one of those HP streams. Because that's yep. what you were bringing to the Elmer Knights all the time. Yeah. And yep. I like that's what I'm using right here. And I love mine. Yep. The only problem is those 32 gigs are just turned out to be just a little short on updating uh, memory. And uh, what I have to I, do with or what I do with my guys is when they bring them in, I just scratch them and then uh, update them and then load them back up. And it's actually quicker to do that than it is to update in place. Do they have a uh, an SD card slot? Yeah, but that hasn't always worked out well. <laughs> They've it our our guys are usually got stuff trashed out anyway, so it's just usually easier to clear out what they've got. Um, you need about three gig extra, uh, and sometimes they'll just have it full up of junk. Um, they, we use an SD ROM or SD card that has about sixty gig in it, and um, but I don't know that if it's maybe it's logs for for browsing logs or something. I don't know what they've got in there, but I just usually scratch it. Um, or you can you know get it small enough and delete enough stuff, and you can update them. But uh, the newer ones of those have 64 gig in them, and that works out really nice. That's the berries. Mark, yeah. did you get your audio to work? Go ahead, Ken. Uh, breaker, breaker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd be, be CB in, I think, from now on, because I, I don't know about the FCC. Well, they just got a new head of the FCC, so they're probably not paying attention to anybody out there right now. Who's a uh, new guy? A new lady. Oh, okay. Who's the uh, new guy? <laughs> I don't remember her name. Uh, she was this week, new FCC head. I bet she's not even a ham. No, none of them are. No, not, a, not in that world. But the new uh, ARRL CEO was on... Uh, one of the uh, bloggers uh, sites uh, here recently. He's a ham. He's definitely a ham. Cool. Oh, yeah. Mark, Mark, did you get your audio to work? Me? No, I mean Gary? No, yours on that uh, digi. No. Oh, no, no, no. You got to no. download the right codec then. Well, it's what I'm doing is going through the uh, speakers. What I'm trying to do. Well, that's I've just got, inline got, speaker. Yeah, that's. What, this is going out through virtual audio cable. Um, and then I should be going in on the virtual audio cable. Devices. There's sound card, there's sound card. See, I wonder if I have to trick it to, well, probably don't. File IO only, no, we don't want, well, maybe not that. Hmm. That's right, it's line. Yeah, that's the line one. That's the. Wayne, by the way, Wayne was on. Uh, I talked a uh, bunch of messages with him today. He got his signal link to work just fine. And he okay. said it. Um, if you read the manuals, um, everything worked out just fine. <laughs> you know, hams don't read manuals. That's exactly what I told him. <laughs> You're the only one man yeah so i don't know why i'm not getting waterfall no okay i mean i'm i'm looking for a go button is what i'm looking uh, for. why are you on 14070 it doesn't matter that's i mean i'm trying to push it just straight in audio oh well, i was gonna no I'm not using a radio. I'm just pumping audio into it. Oh, I'm okay. Hey, the acting FCC commissioner, the woman, 
Yeah. She's been, she's been on the commission since 2012. Wow. Oh. Yeah. And she's just acting right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if I, I haven't dug around enough to know if she's been, uh, uh, championed as the, the new chairman or not, but she, she's been on the, on the, uh, a member of the FCC commission since 12. Uh, can't believe it. Mark's not talking. I know what I'm trying to figure out what's going on. That's no good. At least it's not Ajit Pai, but that's, uh, that's, does it have a test audio? I don't know. I don't use FL Digi or I haven't. Maybe it won't transmit out of band. Well, it's not trans. What I'm trying to do is just listen. I'm trying to have it listen to the audio oh. coming in from my YouTube is what I want. Can you hear me? Test. <laughs> right There's here. Something. This is the thing that I want. It's to running. Yeah. I'll jack up the volume, see if that helps. Looks like Ken and I both got frustration wall problem today. Well, I did succeed in paying my dues tonight. You the man. Hey. You the man. Two, got two things done this today. Wow. I got my COVID shot and I paid my dues. How's your arm feeling? You should be getting to a point where you start. You should ought to know that it's there. What with a shot? Yeah, my arm. I'm not sore yet. I and I didn't even feel the the needle go in. I didn't either, man. This gal was just awesome. I had a on. cute little girl sticking me with that needle, so I was a little distracted. That's, yeah. that's the yeah. That's mine. Was that's too. nice. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. But uh, mine was. Uh, I, 12 hours later, I did mine at 12 in, at 10 in the morning at 10 at night. It, it was like, no, oh, this is going to hurt. Uh, that'll be about mid, mid, midway through my sleep night, probably. Oh, then that's pretty good. And somebody else did the same thing. And uh, it was Ed. <laughs> and I said, oh, it's about 12 hours. Peak is about 12 to 14 hours after the shot. And uh, Ed said, the next day he called me, he said, did you hear me? calling your name about three in the morning yeah <laughs> <laughs> well one thing anyway my wife and i got it within minutes of each other so we'll both be about the same time oh that's good uh, nothing's so we, better than having two commiserate yeah two wake up the rest of the house at, at least you all are able to get a shot well you're texas sorry about that hey i'm telling you it's a wild wild west down here yep Hey, don't oh, yeah. don't don't feel too bad. Don't feel too bad. I can't get a shot either. Because you're a kid. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Youngster. Wouldn't, wouldn't Matt call a 40-year-old guy a young guy? Hey, I'm not Ooh. that young. <laughs> I'm in that what they call the no man zone. I'm, well, uh, I'm too I'm too um not quite old enough to be in the tier two, but I'm um uh I'm old enough that I should be getting the shot, but I'm not. That. Well, hopefully that'll come along pretty quick here. Yeah, I bet. Uh, see, my wife being a school teacher, uh, she gets that's... hers uh, next week, I think. Oh, is she getting one? Well, yeah, uh, I think I think they're supposed. To, did you see that that they're supposed to give? Um, well, at least Oklahoma City Metro and uh, uh, Middell and all those groups are supposed to get theirs. I think it's either it's, let me think it's either next week or the week after it's really 12. Yeah. They, they supposed to get theirs and I'm in that tier three, so I won't get mine till probably March. Yeah. Everybody else got one. Yeah. Okay. It's Mark's turn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm SOL for a while. Indiana is still at 70 and above. Jeez. Well, I, I'm, Texas is 65 and above, but there's so so little vaccine down here that the physicians' offices that have them are only giving them to people that are 70 and older. 
Wow, I didn't. So I'm, I'm, I'm in no man's land. Yeah, is that the, is that's not the, the uh, Pfizer then, uh, or the, the vaccine that you all have doesn't need to be uh, co chilled out really cold. Oh no, we're the uh, pretty much everybody down here is using the Moderna. Yeah. Uh, Mark, uh, uh, by the way, uh, when you. Or, uh, when it comes up, the teachers can get it. Yeah, uh, their spouses can get it at the same time they do. Well, I had it. I had mine in August, so I'm. Well, five. I'm just saying that those yeah. that don't have special setup like you do. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, when my wife goes to get it, I can get it as well. Supposedly at that time with her. Huh. So, so maybe maybe we'll see. I'll have to wait and see. But that's what they said that they were going to allow the spouses of those teachers to get it as well. It, it makes sense, but that's yeah. never been a problem with our governor, so. so yeah, sense, 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 what? Yeah. So we'll see. Yep, 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 yep. So it's like leaving everybody in free fall for the second shot. Yeah. How would they, even, how would they okay. even start the process like that at all? I mean, without- They didn't. It's, they, they started it the other way and then they, I don't know what, what happened was, the counties had got it under control because the state was going slow. And the county said, come back in three weeks, same time, same place. We'll get you a shot. Just like yours is. Then the state got involved and the state says, no, 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 we have a great system. You can just sign up and re, re, uh, what, sign what up a, twice. What a mess. That is the most and then, amateur, amateur piece of crap software. I, yeah, from what I've seen, it is. I mean, well, you can't, when, you're, you, when you register you in the first place, you get three yes or no questions. Then they give you a big old blank that, you know, fill, fill in the blank one. But in reality, you go over to the right and you click on it and it's yes or no, too. So, it's, I mean, there was a random change in the format. And I know a lot of people have skipped that, missed it. And you have to go back and do it again, and, you know. And then, then when you go search for a, an available slot, you can pick one of a hundred locations, and then you go back and you have to put your information back in because yep. it now doesn't know you again. I mean, it's like I don't, I've never seen such a mess. Yep. Instead That's of putting your name in, uh, and just you know, let it come back and offer some slots. You should be able to just register and then give you a potential time, and then. I don't anyway it, it's horrible uh, but then I went to the FCC and now it looks good <laughs> you, you changed your mind can I take my vote back <laughs> it's a matter of perspective it's a really a matter of perspective you know this is the worst thing I've seen wait a minute wait a minute hold on wait except for the one I'm in now <laughs> gotta love it but guys, I'm gonna go. It's starting That's to get late. I was gonna say it's starting to get late. I'm about ready to do the same thing, so I'm gonna yeah. shut her down unless anybody's got something good. No. My other computer says 3 a.m. <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe that's why I'm so having I trouble with the go, FCC. I can only go to 11. Yeah. <laughs> Be safe. All right. and catch up with you later. See you guys. Uh, Glad you came. Hey, get on the radio this weekend. That's right. Get on field day. Turn on, turn on, and turn in some uh, logs. <laughs>